ta mềm ngọt như vậy mà chờ chặt đào mà nói xong qua cũng mà can cam thì cyber yos cambodia lưu ti một hai mùi bà đôi đôi sập đòn đá trên là nó pin đi cứ dương miên một chuyện là bọn muối về ông pi zero trust này vì chưa khẩn sập muối là miên ca pin thì dùng nông ca lương mao thì dây nó pin là dương liệt chạm security architecture này chẳng thì ai cũng lưu khẩn sập zero trust chẳng là mấy xoay vô khẩn sập zero trust mình lục ở trên này chắc chúng ta chia nằm bốn đó nè, xoay vô thì thành sập mà nằm bốn sẽ ít hơn zero tra nó dương miền việt vẫn như lô philip đại kỷ niệm chúng mình như một rùa này giờ zero tra nó mò pi thang vật tế ở việt nam được chưa nè khi ông xôm một cô thuyền cân nơi chun từ lô philip to đèn đỏ yeah philip let me introduce you i already introduce you a little bit uh, so uh, now I hand over the floor to you. You can introduce more about yourself and then uh, jump ahead to the topics. Yeah, we can see your screen clearly. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Bongba Fanrik. And uh, thank you very much for uh, Cambodia Cybersecurity Community and uh, Cyber Zoo uh, Cambodia for you know allowing me to get in touch with you and I discussed with you about the trust, right? So I believe um, a lot of people already heard, heard about the trust uh, before, uh, I guess so. Uh, but uh, the trust is uh, a lot of things, right? Uh, and, and I've been dealing with the trust for the last seven years. I, I, I still, like, you know, keep, uh, you know, uh, uh, refining it every day because a lot of things are coming to the pictures. So, um, uh, happy to sh uh, share with you uh, some of my, you know, uh, practical approach uh, today as well, right? So um, this is uh, a, li a little bit introduction about myself. I've been ha I have been 20 years experience in ICT and cybersecurity industry. Uh, I also have a Master of Science in cybersecurity and uh, focus on the executive leadership in uh, information assurance. Uh, I'm so the one of very first uh, Zertra strategic uh, certified by Forrester uh, since 2019. Uh, uh, my you know daily job is uh, as a solution architect and uh, office of the chief security officer uh, for uh, Asia Pacific and Japan as uh, global cyber security leaders. Uh, besides that, I also involved a lot in the you know building the community. And also helping the 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 kid uh, to be uh, for to be involved in cyber school in Vietnam as well, and uh, been driving you know uh, activity across uh, Southeast Asia together with uh, Bong Funnery. So I'm a key founder and advisor for the Cloud Skill Lion uh, Vietnam community and chapter, and I also co-founded the CISO Club for VN. Uh, currently as a board advisor for Cyber School Vietnam as well, right? And uh, I was used to be one of the board judge uh, for ASEAN CIO CSO Award uh, uh, from 2015 uh, to 2017, organized by IDG, right? So you can, uh, uh, you know, I have a personal website, you can take a look at that, uh, and also can be, you know, get in touch on the social media with uh, my hashtag, right? It's a tech farmer, right? So uh, this is my general journey. I've been uh, involving with Zetra for the last seven years. Uh, also from the theory concept to the architecture design to the Zetra project uh, implementation and deployment, right? And also uh, assessment and review as well. So uh, in, 2000, in August 2019, I, I've been certified as a Zetra uh, strategic by Forrester, uh, one of the very first uh, uh, Zetra strategic uh, in the club. And I also have my own, you know, Zeltrust index, right? For uh, and I put it on my website. So typically, you you, you when you search uh, Zeltrust on Google, right? You will see tons of results, right? But it, it really makes you confusing, right? So I already put in the Zeltrust index uh, with leveraging on the the standard and and genuine information from Forrester, from Nix, from you know, from from. Uh, uh, NSA from CISA, right, and and also other uh, uh third party reference as well, 
uh, I'm interested to the third party reference so that you can take a look and, and read about it and have a, a, a true understanding of zero trust. Because why, why I use the term true understanding? Because uh, there's so many, you know, uh, wrong uh, thinking about zero trust, wrong approach about zero trust as well, right? Because zero trust is very generic, right? But you, you, can, you can approach zero trust from multiple perspectives and multiple way to do that right but not all the way is 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 correct right it's not it's not all the way of approach it proper so that's why we need to have the the best way right the best way possible i would say and uh, the uh in this presentation and uh, sharing i will share two two way of approach right mm -hmm. one way officially from forester and one way that i uh based on my my you my real world experience right so uh, you 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 can take a look from from both sides of the world, right? From Forrester and also from myself. Okay. Um, so the topic today, I'll talk about the zero concept first, right? And uh, then we will move to the third part, is that some key takeaway, and uh, we'll go for the Q&A session, right? So, so let's move to the concept first, okay? Okay, so uh, a lot of people ask why is zero trust, right? So, uh, uh, Zeltrust, let me remind, uh, Zeltrust is not a product, right? Zeltrust is not also a, 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 a solution. Zeltrust is not, it's not also a single technology, right? Uh, on, on this concept is wrong, right? Uh, Zeltrust is at first, at first, a security strategy, right? Designed by Forrester, by Mr. John Kinevat in 2010. So the idea of Zeltrust from very first beginning to to use this concept to prevent the data breach, right? And you know, prevent data breach is the top-notch uh, priority of business for every organization, right? Because when you got the, 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 the data breach happen to your organization, right? A lot of bad things happen together, right? You will see that uh, in several cases in the past about, you know, uh, uh, um, um, the, the, the case of a big, hack, right, and a big data breach, you see that the C-level, right, the CEO, the CIO, the CISO is, is on gone, right? Then the organization also facing with the, the, the finding from the, 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 the uh, government uh, uh, agency, right, and the law enforcement as well, uh, multi, you know, uh, million of dollar USD, right? And the third part is that you can be get involved into the lawsuits or the 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 uh because of your your user or your subscriber because in in the data breach the data also consists of the privacy data of your or uh, uh, subscriber right? and once they know that they are uh, have right to sue you right because there's there's a you know privacy law and regulation, right, uh, to support them. Let's say that, the, you know, the GDPR or the, the CVPA, right, is all there to, 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 to support the, 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 the subscriber, right? So, and, and not to mention that if your organization is on the, 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 the stock exchange market, then you will see the, the, the value of the share, you know, keep dropping, right? And, and the market cap also keep dropping all together. That's the, then it, the organization will, will lose a, a big amount of, you know, uh, uh, money as well, right? So we, no one from us uh, want to face the data breach situation, right? So, it, but in order to prevent that, right, we, we need to do a, a very important thing. Remember in the past, uh, why all of this data breach happened? Because we still rely heavily on the, the model we call uh, the trust model or the trust concept, right? So this trust model, this trust concept, you know, working based on the, 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 the philosophy that we believe we trust uh, on the, uh, the users, our internal users, our internal devices, our internal requests, our internal application, right? So on and so forth. So everything that related to internal, we, we, we trust. Because we trust, we just allow it, right? We and we even allow it access everything and everywhere, right? So because of that, the, the data breach very very easily to be, you know, occur and also very easy to be successful, right? 
So uh, the concept of zero trust is that we need to, we never trust, right? We need to verify and we need to eliminate the, this implicit trust, you know, out, out of the, the digital system of our organization or even in a digital world, right? So the ways to do that is that we never trust. That's why we consistently verifying everything that is not only internal, but also external. So no, 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 there is no thing such trust in this digital system. In, when we're talking about digital system, you, you, we, we need to talk about the internal and external. We talk about the, 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 the inter, um, interface with the third party, the partner, the contractor, and the subscriber as well, right? So because all of these factors will, will interact with our digital system, right? So we need to make sure that we need to consistently verifying the, all the users on the devices, the data, the application, the digital access, right? And also the services across uh, on the, the location of our organization. So the, 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 this is the very, you know, short and sharp recap of what is Zero Trust and, what, and also the, the, the way that Zero Trust will, will shift and change uh, the, the way we treat our, 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 our you know, uh, user devices, data, application, access, and services. Uh, a lot of things have been changed, right? So uh, let's talk about uh, some history and momentum of Zero Trust, right? So uh, in 2008, uh, Zero Trust first introduced by John Kitterberg, right? And uh, he he been mentioning about this Zero Trust uh, in a series of speaking event, public event in US. And uh, after that, uh, two years later, uh, Zero Trust white paper first uh, launched uh, after the research and validation by John Kinnevat and the uh, Forrester. 10 is the years that uh, the Zero Trust uh, were born, right? So up till now, uh, so Zero Trust have been in the market for 11 years, right? So it's, now it become very mature and, and very useful and become a, a, a one of the gold standard when we talk about the, the cybersecurity strategy. And, and uh, I can even tell that uh, this is the first and 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 the only uh, uh cybersecurity strategy indeed right uh, uh at, at this moment right and um after its launching in 2010 uh, in 2012 uh the first zetras network deployed at a defense contractor right and also a major manufacturing company as well so you can see that the all nation quickly adopt zero trust right but the zero trust at that time it very much focused on the network uh, that's why we want zero trust network right at, at that time right but now uh, we have the whole uh, zero trust architecture i will talk about that earlier but uh, in 2010 is the first zero trust network right and in 2014 then the google also adopt zero trust and say the cio should build zero trust infrastructure right and they adopt zero trust and uh, custom the zero trust concept and make it like a beyond cop, right? Uh, architecture uh, that uh, uh, they have today, right? Uh, within the same years, Netflix uh, announced the adoption of Zero Trust as well, right? So uh, everyone knows Google, everyone knows Netflix, I believe, right? In Tau, to Tau, uh, actually, Coca Cola is also one of the very first uh, um, manuf manufacturing company that adopts Zero Trust as well. And in 2016, they also announced the, the official investment in Zero which means the the big bigger investment in zero trust and uh, but the the key highlight in 2016 is the case of the opm pitch right so the office of personnel management of the us government and uh, you know that in this opm bridge uh around 4 4.5 uh, millions of uh, record right a data record is, is uh, are stolen was stolen and uh, also included uh, the the personal profile of uh, even the director of FBI as well. So the, the US House of Representatives, right? They, after that period, they, they request uh, to have a, a different approach uh, for the, you know, uh, uh, OPM environment first. And um, later on, moving a little bit for some, you know, uh, government agency in, inside the US government, right? And the, this is the first, uh, I would say the first government, uh, first, uh, zero trust adoption for the government and uh, uh, an agency as well, right? In 2018, uh, Forrester launched 
the Zero Trust Extended Ecosystem Framework. So in short, we, we call it ZTX, right? And uh, this is the still the latest version of the Zero Trust uh, at this moment, right? And it would, in 2020, uh, NICS, right? The, the National uh, uh, Institute of uh, Standard and Technology in US, they officially launched the SP800-2007, right? And uh, uh, for Zero Trust architecture and make, make Zero Trust architecture become a standard, right? So that's a di that's a different thing that between the concept, the framework, and also the, the architecture and, and the standard, right? I believe uh, you already know about that, right? So talking about the framework, that's, which means that this is the, the one that you should do, right? But that actually, there's nothing to measure the outcome. And, and 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 qualify the, the 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 outcome to make sure that you meet the 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 requirement right the outcome requirement as something like standard right but with the uh, the standard in the next SP and red uh, two zero seven they have actually they have come out of some you know uh, 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 outcome as well but it's still very basic one right that's why um in uh, in two thousand twenty first uh. You know the the uh, if you take a look at the the uh, President Biden uh, cyber executive order, in that cyber executive order that he released uh, in May two thousand twenty first, then you see that he that executive order mentioned I would say more than ten times about the trust architecture ZTA, right? And right after the, the executive order of uh, the they also launched the Zero Trust Reference Architecture uh, right after that, I think two weeks. Actually, the DOD's Zero Trust Reference Architecture, they've been you know, uh, researching and build this reference architecture since uh, February uh, 2021 as well. But uh, uh, they, they still is a draft release, right? So they launched the official release after the uh, executive order announcement, right? Uh, in the September 2021, uh, uh, you know the 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 CISA, also U.S. Uh, government agency in charge of uh, yeah, infrastructure and security, right? Uh, uh, released what we call the zero trust maturity model, and it's still in the draft version. And uh, now they open for public review and common uh, up until the uh, the 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 end of uh, this uh, month. That would mean the first of October. So. Um, Normally, this uh, zero trust maturity model is very much for the government agency, right? But you uh, and also organization can take a look at this zero trust maturity model and uh, you know try to study it because uh, talking about zero trust, you will see later on maturity level is very important, right? It's, it's the, one of the key criteria and the milestone where of your zero trust journey, right? So we need to understand how the maturity model is working, right? So uh, this is the latest update for, for the Zero Trust uh, history, right? So uh, let's uh, move to the what we call the latest one uh, of Zero Trust, the Zero Trust Standard uh, ZTX framework, right? So when we talk about, uh, this is also update from Forrester, uh, just to reemphasize, right? So you will have uh, a seven key core pillar, right? Uh, that are, 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 are seven uh, key component, right, in this framework. Uh, which is if you see that right it, the data is in the center of this uh, framework so this framework we call data centric framework and uh, it's very well aligned with digital transformation because at, at the digital transformation uh, framework and journey you will see that the data is always is also uh, data centric right uh, the, 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 uh, the the key uh pillar of the digital transformation is, uh, is also the data right everything will be based on data you we analyze the data and we provide the you know the, the de decision right we make decision be, uh, be based on the, the data analytics and result that we have right so um the data is very important we need to understand you know the, the data categorization the schema the, the of data inside right and also uh, and uh, whether you have encryption and, and under control over it as well and so on and so forth so that that kind of data is, is the first and foremost uh in in this this framework we need to take a look at right then you also have the other 
uh, popular, just like people, right? So some 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 people call it uh, identity, right? But I prefer still prefer to call it people because because people are not, not just only identity, right? Identity is a subset of people, <laughs> frankly to say, right? But because they they say that okay, just five, but okay, let's use the people here, right? Because it's a standard term from from Forrester, right? So uh, you're talking about the people, uh, you know, identify the users, right? The identity, the digital identity. And also the the the, the association uh, about the authentication and authorization of the people, right? Uh, as well, right? And and uh, also you need to monitor that that uh, users, you know, logging, log out, uh, time frame as well. So all this thing is uh, more on the control that I will be talking uh, a little bit later on, right? Uh, we also have devices, right? So talking about devices. Uh, devices is very interesting thing, right? Uh, when we talk about in, in in the old day, when we talk about devices, you might think it's just only the laptop we use, right? Or even it's a Windows laptop, it's a Mac uh, laptop, right? Or even some cases Linux laptop. But uh, it's not always the case. So now we have more devices. Uh, for instance, you have more mobile device, even as iOS or Android. And you also have IoT devices, also devices, right? And talking about the uh, some of the we call the the virtual devices, just like you have a virtual desktop infrastructure VDI, right? So that that one and also it's a device, but it's a virtual device, right? So a lot of of, of, of you know various various things of devices in, in in this terminology, right? So uh, we need to be aware of that, or even if you're Let's say your virtual server can be considered as a, as a device itself. We call it virtual device as well, right? So we need to make sure that if we can uh, have way so that you can, you know, uh, uh, control the device, you know, the, you need to make sure that we can validate the device uh, 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 um, quality in terms of, you know, whether we can isolate it, or secure is right uh, whenever the 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 devices access to our key uh, corporate resources right and uh, the network here also very interesting talking about the network right um it's not on, just only the physical network right you have you know now you have you're talking about what what else are uh, you have to talk about sdn software defined network that's why it will give you virtual network it can give you cloud network and if and even now you have a, a, a latest network we call containerized network, right? Or when all the, the, the container part talking to each other in, 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 uh, on top of the containerized engine, right? Then it will create a, a new way of the network, right? So, so on and so forth. And, and the, the network technology keep changing as well, not to mention. So uh, this network now become very complex, right? And we need, we need to be aware of that. And we need that. Uh, whether you can have the control over the network, just like the you know segmentation, uh, isolation, right, and also the security enforcement, right, uh, uh, on each part of the network as well, right. So um, and of course uh, the the popular number five it we call workload, right. So when we talk about workload, you can imagine that uh, it's a cloud computing environment, right. And talking about cloud computing environment, you also have a lot of kind of deployment for the cloud, right? We will talk about the private cloud, the public cloud, the hybrid cloud, and the multi-cloud uh, strategy all together as well. So it will be quite complicated. And uh, deep to the level of workload, we also talk about the virtual machine. We'll talk about the, you know, the, the container and also the serverless right, environment as well, right? Uh, so we need to be, you have, a, you know, the proper control on that. We And of course, like what I mentioned earlier, uh, we cannot trust, right? So we need to make sure we need to verify and validate the workload uh, every time, right? And uh, the the next is uh, the rest too popular is the two round circle you see on on on, on the right uh, on the round, right? Uh, the the round another round circle we call it visibility and analytic, right? So visibility and analytic is the way it works is just like this. It will uh, we try to get all the visibility across the the five co popular. You, have, you need to have a, a you know both both things at the same time you need to have the broad uh, uh, visibility plus the deep visibility at the same time 
and across the corpora. So which means that you need to have to understand to see what the people are doing. on top of that and not just visibility the analytic part is also very important right uh, where you will apply the the ai uh, artificial intelligence ml machine learning uh, to to the, the data to the information that you gather uh, to the visibility that you you have across the copula and try to identify the the anomaly incident right uh, something that not usual not common it's an anomaly things, right? Then you will trigger that incidence uh, and uh, you will see the, but you need to see the incident in different way. You need to see the incident in a prior time manner, which means uh, you will know which incidence is the uh, high risk, which medium is the medium risk and which incident is the low risk so that you can, you know, prioritize and shorter the, 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 the mean time to detection, shorter the mean time to respond, right? MTTD and MTTR that we talk about in the SOC, uh, the security operation center, right? So you can leverage on this to and fit that, that incident into the automation or orchestration, the last circle, so that uh, you can automate, you can even automate the, you know, the incidents and, and respond to that, right? But I can, you can automate uh, the, 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 the SOC analytics uh, assigning, you can automate the K assigning, and you can, uh, can automate the, 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 you know, the actionable event, right? Uh, back, back from that automation orchestration, back to the people, back to the devices, back to the network, back to the data, and back to the workload automatically, right? So this, this is what the ZTX framework is working, right? So, uh, and I need to highlight because a lot of people say, wow, I take a look at the Zertrust extended framework. I don't see the the the, the value or the differentiator of the, the 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 model that I used before, right? Because you don't really understand what is Zertrust, right? Uh, if if you follow what I say earlier, it's very key because the visibility is different, right? The analytics uh, you you need to have analytics across the whole environment, across the copula, not just a subset of the whole environment, right? And uh, you need to do it automatically, right? If you cannot do it automatically, don't tell it's zero trust. Uh, automation is a key pillar of zero trust, which means you need to do that, right? All the things that I mentioned like, automatically, right? If you cannot do it automatically, uh, then you, sorry, it's not just it's not zero trust yet, okay? Uh, okay, so uh, in uh, August 2020, uh, Next, also launch the SP hundred two thousand seven, right, and and make it like a standard. So everybody talking about that, right? So I, I have a quick recap here of the the some of the key uh, focus for the the uh, Z, uh, the Z, ZTA zero architecture in the next SP hundred two thousand seven. Uh, you can download it free from from Nick's website, right? Uh, later, I can 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 share you the the link to download that as well. You, you, or you can search on Google, right? Is a is a public. Uh, so if you take a look at at, at this this SP and read uh two thousand seven, you will see uh, uh it will try to map uh back to the ZTX on together, right? So you will talk about the you know the identity governance, and you are also talking about which is the people, right? You talk about micro segmentation is the network. You talk about the, the network infrastructure and software defined the perimeter SVP also the network portion, right? Then talking about the devices, uh, you're talking about the uh, device application sandboxing is also as a devices level, right? Then you're talking about the workload, the multi cloud or the cloud to cloud enterprise is the workload, right? And you also talk about the 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 the, the stolen stolen credential or insider threat, right? Is also re related back to the the people. And the visibility on the network is the, the, the last part, right? The, the visibility and analytic and automation orchestration, right? So it will map back to the Z, ZTX, but it's the more, a little bit more detailed, I would say. Uh, if, you, if you read the ZTX, right, it's quite very generic, then this uh, virtual architecture is be more detailed, but to me, uh, around you know, 44 pages is still very high level, right? But, it, but it's still better. <laughs> 
than a ZTX because now you have more info, right? Right. So uh, the the question is why a lot of organization in on the world uh, is uh, you know uh, aggressively adopting zero trust. Uh, there, there's some benefit, of course. If there's no benefit, then I believe there's no organization will adopt zero trust for sure, right? So we have uh, I have taken a reference from Forrester for what we call the, the eight benefit of the, uh, you know, a business and security, right? Of zero trust. So uh, uh, if you see the color here, right? The, the blue color is the benefit, is the security benefit, right? And the green color is the business benefit. I try to, to, to put the color so that it's easier for you to differentiate, right? Between the two. So uh, talking about security benefit, right? Very easy because zero trust is security, right? So it's cyber security. So, if, if it, it had to bring the, the cybersecurity benefit for sure, right? So if you take a, a look at the number one, it say, oh, it's improved network visibility, uh, bridge detection and vulnerability management, right? Yeah, of course, it's a security benefit. Or number two, it stop malware propagation uh, for sure, right? We need to stop the malware, right? Uh, even no or a no malware, we need to stop, stop it, right? And uh, number seven is it will stop the exfiltration of internal data into the hand of malicious actor, right? So this is the, if you take a look at the attack life cycle, it's the last stake of the attack life cycle is that we call data exploitation, right? And the Zerto also have to stop that uh, phase in the attack life cycle, right? But the the, the things, the, the bigger thing that Zerto has bring to the organization is the business benefit, uh, right? And, and, and that's, that's, that's how it's well designed from, from Scratch from very first time when John Kinovet built it, right? Created. Uh, it's mentioned that number three, it will have to reduce both capitals and operational expenditures on cybersecurity. Yeah, it, it, this is proven, right? Um, uh, when we talk about KPAX and OPAX, right? And total, we, we combine together, we call it TCO, total card ownership, right? Zero Trust uh, really reduce the, the TCO. And that's a not only the reason about the theory concept, but uh, Forrester already conduct the, what we call the total goal, total and economic impact uh, of leveraging zero trust with a lot of our nation all over the world. And the, and the result, right, come out uh, is a re also reflect this uh, benefit as well, right? And uh, you, you was, I will explain more detail about this when we talk about the zero trust, uh, um, uh, ecosystem, right? That that will show you more clearer uh, why why we can have to you know uh, reduce the DCO, right? Uh, number four, if we talk about uh, the, it, how zero trust can reduce the scope and the cost of compliant initiative, right? So typically, uh, because in when you 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 start with the zero trust, uh, you need to define the protect survey, right? I, I'll talk a bit more about that later as well. But when you define the protect survey. If you will map that protect survey with the compliant initiative that you want to achieve. For instance, if you are from financial services organization or the banking, you may think about the PCDSS, right? Or, or if you are a generic organization, you might want to achieve the ISO to, to the 701, right? Then if you map that protect survey together with that, you will see that the scope now becomes smaller and really niche, right? Really focused. And because the, the, the scope, you, you can define it straight from the very first beginning. Rather than the old day, you, 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 you cannot define the, the, the right scope from the first beginning, then you build a very big, big scope. Then you slowly reduce, 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 right? The scope up until it, it fit the, 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 the compliant initiative. Then you're starting to do it, right? It will take a lot of time, right? So now with Zero Trust, you can, do, you can define the right scope from the first beginning. And because of that, it will help you to save uh, the cost, and the money, and time and effort uh, of the organization as well, right? Number five is very interesting. Number five is we say that the zero trust will have to eliminate the inter silo finger pointing uh, culture inside the organization, right? So this is true. Uh, I, I'm not too sure if, if this happened in your organization or not, but a lot of organizations that have been working with for the zero trust strategy and, and, and architecture. Uh, when I, I talk with the CISO, then I'm, I, I try to, you know, gather the, the different team inside the IT organization to, to sit down together to define the protect survey and, and the, 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 the transition flow to build a zero trust architecture. Then I realized that the, 
it, there's actually a, a, a silo and, and you know, independent working across the department, right? So you have the application team, you have the network team, you have the cybersecurity team, and, and three of them normally look working in silo, right? Not to work very closely uh, together, not to communicate, you know, uh, uh, closely together uh, at, the, at this moment, right? So normally the application team, they will build the application, then they call now the cybersecurity team and say, hey, cybersecurity, uh, do the pen test for my application, do the vulnerability assessment for my application, right? Then they call out the network team, oh, my network need to access to this port number, to the service number, to this protocol, please open that network for me, right? But it doesn't work that way in, 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 in the world of zero trust, because if you do that way, you're still going back to the legacy approach, right? With zero trust approach, uh, on this treaty, we need to sit down together from the very first beginning when you're starting to build a new application, right? So that the, the team will, will discuss about the, the what we call the soft, uh, software security architecture. We're talking about, you know, the, the uh, security control and also the network access, right? For the application, from the design, one phase of that application, right? And by, by working in, in that, you know, modern, uh, all three teams were working very closely together. They are, they are open. They are feel comfortable to work together. So every new things they work that way, right? It it it, it, it really it was you know saving the time of relaunching the app to the market, right? And accelerate the the go to market of, of, of the application will have to bring the you know the the advantage, my business advantage and benefit to the organization as well. You you have been, you will, will be very more competitive in the market right and 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 the and you confident to do that because now your application is is safer because the all three team work together from the very first beginning right they will address all the the, the possible risks in that application early on right so that you can you know have you know the, the your 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 you know your risks will become very smaller right Com compared to the, the legacy approach right and the the the, the nice things of this one is also the follow-up once the IT department, you have the application, the network, the security working together, and you build up, you know, a security culture, the, the IT organization can, can have to influence the other department as well by, by the same, you know, culture, right? And, and, and uh, you, the IT team will have to, to, you know, influence the sales, the marketing, the HR, then it's open to the whole organization. And, and, and Zero Trust approach across, uh, the whole organization will have you to build a, a proven and, and a, a, a future proof a cyber security culture, right? Uh, as you move into the, your digital transformation journey. And that is the one a very, you know, a key uh, achievement, right? And very, I would say that the top priority of the cyber security uh, program, right? Uh, cyber security culture will, will, will play a very important part on that. Because when we talk about, you know, uh, people, technology and process, right? Uh, people is the more important because the first, right? People who are the one who define processes. People who are the one who evaluate and choose the, techno the proper technology, right? So we need to make sure that the people have a, a, a proper, right? A, 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 a awareness and a culture for cybersecurity across our generation. And Zero Trust is happening that way. Uh, to accelerate the, 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 the security culture building, right? For organization. Number six is increase the data awareness and insight. Uh, of course. Yeah, believe, uh, maybe I, Yamin, uh, I saw uh, Supat is raised hand so far. He uh, might be, uh, have a question uh, during your talk. Yeah, yeah, so, sure, uh, sure, sorry. So, so far uh, you can open microphone and asking directly uh, what is your uh, concern or, or, or question. Sorry, sorry, I just click. So please go on. Okay, please go ahead. He said <laughs> he just click on it. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, sorry. I, I, actually, I, I cannot hear him clearly as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, his, his line is breaking up. Okay. Never mind, let go. Uh um uh we, you can still put in the, the question in the chat as well, right? So uh, later when I finished uh, some uh, part, I can also take a look at the chat and to see the question as well, okay? Okay, so let me move on. 
Uh, number six, all right, is increase the data when it's inside, of course, because now you know the, the data, right, uh, better than before, because when you, uh, data is an important part of your protect survey, right, and when you define your protect survey, you know, where is your in, in important and critical data that you should focus and protect, right, uh, normally we call it the, the crowd jewel in, in, the, in the organization, right, so uh, we can prioritize and, 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 and focus uh, building the zero trust on, on top, of that uh, critical data uh, that we need to protect, right? And uh, number A, uh, it, it straightly say that the zero trust have to, you know, enable the business, you know, uh, uh, digital business transformation. Yeah. It, so zero trust and digital transformation well align together, right? The uh, zero trust supporting and securing your di uh, digital transformation journey for sure. Especially when you talk about digital transformation, you are starting to use a lot of cloud uh, adoption, right? And talking about cloud, uh, you, when you think about cloud, you need to think about zero trust because you were starting to put your data, your application, right? And, and on top of the cloud service provider. And, and the question is, can you trust the CSP? Can you trust the cloud service provider? Of course not. And because you cannot trust, right? And even they, they also give you the, the, what we call the cybersecurity uh, uh, sharing uh, responsibility as well, model as well, right? So you, you, you cannot trust them because you need to protect your data because it's under your responsibility, right? So because of that, zero trust, you need to, uh, to enforce zero trust well from very first beginning when you adopt cloud, right? Uh, that, that's that's the, the way, there's no other way, okay? So uh, let me relate to the, the so, so this is on the concept, right? So let's move to some practical approach here, okay? So um, we talk about some kind of uh, the, the uh, Forrester also, uh, give you the, the 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 practical guide to the zero trust implementation as well, right? So the one of the 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 uh, three things that I mentioned, uh, first I mentioned in this the practical guide is that uh, you need to define the detailed roadmap. Yeah, uh, of course the you know the zero trust Z framework uh, use this framework to set your overall zero trust strategy. You need to define that right and. Uh, Make sure that uh, when when you define this strategy, uh, you need to have the both the business and IT stakeholder in the development of the roadmap, right? So uh, from business side, you need to make sure that the you know the the BOD also uh, uh, aware of that and endorse and sponsor for your zero trust uh, strategy on roadmap. You need to get the C level, right? The CIO, the CEO, or in some cases CFO together with you. Right, so that they uh, they aware of this uh, zero trust strategy and roadmap, and they the one who prepare and approve the budget for you, right? Because after that you need to to, to build the zero trust project, right? And the project need to have funding. The project need to have the budget to fulfill uh, to and to run and and to to achieve the goal, right? So the money sponsoring, right, is very important, right? That's why you need to have the the people who can make decision. For the funding of your zero trust project right and also in terms of the the it people you also need to have the application team right and the, the uh, and uh, the, the the business the analyst team as well if possible so that they, you can understand the business process right and because one you can understand the business processes you can easily to map it into transaction flow of zero trust right uh, and um, from the you also need to have the the architect people uh, together in, in this uh, as a tech stakeholder, related stakeholder in, in development of the roadmap as well, right? And uh, uh, you, you can uh, see that if there's any, you know, interdependencies within the, 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 the on the project, right? Actually, the Zero Trust project, uh, you can put it um, uh, like, a, you know, a single project or you can put it together with the business project all together, right? So, if, for instance, you launch out the new application, for your business and you call it as a, as a new application uh, business project, right? Then uh, one of the best way to achieve zero trust is that you can put in zero trust inside that business project and, and, and make it happen all together with the application. So when the new application project is done, you already fulfill some portion of the zero trust strategy and roadmap together with that uh, application project and use that application project as a sample of success, right? And go bring it back to the, 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 the BOD, bring it back to the, 
the 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 um sea level and to say hey we are doing the 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 project the zero trust together with this uh, application project and is it, it, and it's successfully right it is successful one so why can why should we explore and expand this success right across the other project and and, and so across our own environment right uh, across all the, uh, the 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 location of our organization right so we can use one sample success of the project, right? Uh, and, 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 and develop and expand uh, the Zero Trust uh, roadmap and strategy from that as well, right? If, if we wish to do so, right? And uh, talking about the, the second part is the maturity level. Uh, this is very important uh, because without the maturity level, you will, the organization will not know uh, where they are in the Zero Trust journey, right? Uh, because the trust journey just like it's the long term journey. It will stay together with the organization up until the organization disappear and and no longer in the business, right? So as long as the organization is there, the zero trust will be there uh, together, right? So, but we need to make sure that we 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 know where we are and we know where we have to, right? So in order to know uh, where we are in the zero trust. Uh, journey, we need to have a current baseline, right? So the current baseline is somehow like uh, to end to answer the question where we are in the zero trust journey, right? What 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 kind of you know capability on the technology that we have, right? Already have and 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 well aligned with zero trust. So uh, in the real world, uh, not I I can say that the organization somehow they have some kind of you know, control and some kind yeah. of capability that related to zero trust already. You will not start the zero trust journey from zero, right? Because you already have some, right? But you need to know where is that, right? And and, and map map it back to the ZTX framework so that you will know exactly for sure. Okay, for that uh, portion, I already have this, but I still short of this. I need to get 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 it, right? Uh, and 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 for for in how for how long? Let's say I need to achieve that in, in the next year so that I, this core pillar of zero trust I become a, 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 a biggest uh, or, or the, the most uh, level in maturity. So talking about maturity level, uh, Forrester defined that a three level of maturity model in the mentoring model. So you will have as a first, the first one is we call beginner. Then the second maturity level they call is uh, intermediate. And the last one, uh, Forrester called it advanced, right? So uh, normally, the, um, from what I can see in, in, in real world and especially across this uh, region, uh, Southeast Asia, uh, most of the organization start with the in-between beginner and intermediate, right? Some, some big organization, uh, they can start from intermediate, but rarely, rare, rarely the organization start from the advanced level, right? In, in the Southeast Asia region, right? So uh, we, we need to move uh, move toward the from the beginner to the intermediate and advanced, right? And uh, we we have a that's why we need to build the roadmap, right? Because the roadmap will map to the the, the maturity level uh, as well, right? So after you uh you have the baseline, you know for sure what else that you need to get into the picture, right? So you can move your your maturity level from beginner to intermediate and to advanced, right? And of course, uh by by doing the the one of the best way. To do that is to perform the what we call the zero trust maturity assessment level assessment, right? So uh, it's not it's not on, only uh, have you the baseline, the current baseline, but uh, it also have you to 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 see your existing capability and and also some uh, business initiative as well, right? Because talking about zero trust also link it back to business, right? And uh, you because that you can set your design maturity state, right? To say, okay, now I already as a beginner uh, maturity level, I want to reach uh, the intermediate maturity stake in the next two years. And I want to achieve the advanced uh, uh, maturity level in the, in the next five years, right? So you set the goal, you set the state, you set the time frame to achieve that, right? And, and you can be, and you can, once you have all this thing, you will, you know, shave it into a, a full detail. A strategy and roadmap, and you present to the board, or, or you can even present to the business management, right? To tell about your plan, right? And talking about when you talk about the board and also the, the, the business management, 
you will need to have a, a proper plan, a very detailed plan, your goal, your milestone, your mature design material stake, and, and time frame to achieve that. And also the, the, the project, right? You, you need to, to build the project and map to that, uh, you know, plan and uh, the roadmap. And, and you know, uh, and, and that that project will tie to which core pillar of the Zero Trust uh, extended framework as well, right? So demonstrate to the management and the board that you already have planned for that, right? And typically, from what I can see in the real world, the one who, who, to, who will be in charge for the Zero Trust strategy and roadmap, right, should be the CISO, right? The Chief Information Security Officer. And this CISO, uh, should report directly to CEO and also to the board. That's the best way, right? If if the CISO still report to the CIO, right? Then then I can tell you the zero trust is is half just halfway, right? The zero trust need to bring up up to the board and 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 the C level. And the only way to do that is that is is the best way to do that is the one who really in charge, who really responsible for the zero trust program, right? Should talk directly, communicate frequently right, and directly with the, the business stakeholder, the business decision maker, rather than talking, you know, indirectly to the CIO and get a CIO to talk to the, the board and, and business management. Uh, the, that's just halfway to the threat, right? Uh, this is the real world experience uh, from what I can see, right? And when we present to the the, the to the board, the, in the, pra the practical way is that uh, we need to make, uh, to be clear about, you know, What's the benefit of zero trust, right? Uh, back to the A business and uh, security benefit that I shared with you earlier from Forrester, you need to use that and tell with the, the, the business management and uh, business decision maker, right? And focus on the, the top five business uh, benefit that I highlight, right, uh, earlier, right? And you also need to mention uh, some other benefit as well. For instance, if you have a zero trust uh, 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 strategy, for your business, then you 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 will have more customer. So the funny things I will always say is that use this trust to build trust of your user, <laughs> of your customer, right? It, 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 it sounds like uh, you know uh, 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 the very funny thing, right? But it's the right way, right? Uh, build their trust, right? Use their trust to build the customer trust, right? And uh, that's customer trust is the trust in your application, trust in your service, uh, and trust in your branding, right? Because you, the customer, your subscriber, your customer, or even your partner, your, your uh, third party, right? Uh, will know that you your organization is moving to their trust, right? And you do it uh, in, in, in an, uh, a professional way. You're really serious to that uh, their trust journey. You don't do their trust for fun, or even you don't do their trust because the other organization or even your competitors, they also uh, doing their trust, right? That's, the, that's not the right approach. You do their trust because you see the value, you see the true benefit to your organization and you, you use that benefit and, and bring to your customers as well, right? And uh, uh, when you build the, the zero trust strategy, the content is very important, I will tell you, right? Don't, don't, don't build a very huge content uh, complex content, right? Just make it short and sharp, right? And, and follow this uh, practical guide from Forrester. Highlight the key strategy, highlight the roadmap, highlight the baseline, highlight the, the, the existing one uh, of the Zero capability that we already have, right? And, and set out the, the, the very clear, the maturity stake and the time frame to achieve that, right? And action plan, uh, you can even ask him for the funding, right, uh, of the project, and and because and you can have a proper, uh, I would say, um, a budget, right, uh, allocation for that, right. So, uh, of course, the 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 with zero trust, you can do a good thing because now you can translate the capability or I call it zero trust capability, but. Uh, some people call it technology. Okay, that's fine. Because technology is very easy, very, very familiar to us, right? Uh, so you can easily transform and translate the technology mapping to business benefit, right? Uh, because now you have zero trust and you have the 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 the, the framework, you have the you know the architecture to uh, to to deliver it, right? So everything will now be, become very clear. Uh, you you so this is on the the practical. Uh, you know, guide to do the zero implementation and, and from Forrester. 
Um, there's the document about that, but that document is the uh, uh, it's not free. <laughs> uh, Forrester sell it right for 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 a mile for some amount. Um, uh, I, I I'm lucky to read it, so I I can have some you know recap here for you. So uh, uh, okay, so uh, but to me the practical guide from Forrester is still uh, a little bit uh, not not so much on low level yet, right? Uh, you still in, in 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 the middle, which means it, it still come into a, a little bit detail, but it will not tell you, uh, okay, uh, what should you do, which action you should take, right? Uh, which one you should do first? They they didn't tell you that they they just allow you to do everything that you want uh, as long as you can meet some requirement about the maturity level. They in the maturity level, they 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 don't even. You know, describe the detail. You know, uh, bullet for you as well, right? So that's why I say for zero trust, the key challenges of the organization when you adopt zero trust is that there's no silver bullet, right? There's no silver bullet for you to to follow to achieve zero trust. You are freely, you know, on your own, uh, by your way, right? As long as you 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 map, you can map it back to the ZTX framework. You can map it back to the Zetros architecture from this SP in to 07, and you can you know map it back to the, the maturity level, tree maturity level defined by Forrester, right? So it really, from my point of view, is really still very hard for an organization to adopt it because we sometimes we still don't know what should we do, right? Especially what should we do first. And, and why why should we do right we, we need to answer this kind of question right is it really hard to do that right so uh that's why i'm thinking about that so i i say uh, okay based on my uh you know engaging with zero trust and also organization so uh there's some i also have my some my personal practical guys to approach for the zero trust implementation that i'm sharing with you today right so this is this my practical guy Will be divided into two level at the high level and also the low level right so what why 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 i need to, to do is in two level uh because when talking about the high level sometimes uh i talking with the CISO on cio they they already follow the zero source as gtx right but they feel wow i know i know this core pillar i know what i should do in, in general but uh I need to have some, you know, high level instruction, right? So I can follow that and, and use that as a key metric to measure my adoption of zero trust. And also because of that, I can, you know, uh, assign the, the some, you know, uh, tasks and, and, and activity to my team so that my team can follow up on the low level uh, approach, right? So uh, with as a high level, uh, that's a five step that I always recommend to the, the CISO uh, and uh, CIO, uh, right, or the management, is that um, the first one, you need to, to make sure that zero trust has to be on top as a strategic level, right? Uh, don't, don't build zero trust from the ground up, uh, from the, the bottom to the top, right? Zero trust, the most effective way to, to uh, build zero trust uh, is that you need to do a top-down approach, right? The, the where you need to make sure that the, the uh, BOD, the business management have to understand what is zero trust, what zero trust can have to organization, what benefit zero trust can bring to organization. And they endorse to zero trust and they buy in with zero trust and they support and sponsor for zero trust. Once you have that, right, at the strategic level, it's very easy for you to follow up the next step, which is building, uh, leveraging on the strategy, uh, mapping with the business strategy and to build your zero trust architecture, right? So you're starting to put in the control, proper control to the architecture, right? Uh, that uh, yeah. and in order to cover this zero trust architecture, uh, you need to think about the building the zero trust ecosystem, right? So this zero trust ecosystem is very much different from the legacy security ecosystem that you already have, right? I I do believe every kind of organization you already have some some kind of legacy cyber security ecosystem in play, right? Uh, you, you might have firewall. You might have IDS, you might have web proxy. Yeah, it's a legacy security ecosystem, but it's not zero trust ecosystem. Because uh, we, later I will tell you how zero trust ecosystem should look like and should be built off, right? Uh, very much different from the legacy one we have. And I, I would I talk about the, the limitation of the 
legacy like uh, excuse the ecosystem as well right but uh hold up for, uh, hold it for a second okay let's move to the next one right in order to cover the ecosystem uh we need to transform the way that we build ecosystem by leveraging on the platform right not the point product that we use before so when i'm talking about firewall i've been talking about ips web proxy is a point product right it's not a platform right and the zero trust ecosystem need to build based on the platform not the power product right and and and, and that's a reason uh, uh for that right and, and uh after you choose the platform right you choose the platform you define that okay i will use the platform uh and uh, then you will uh ask the next question okay so how can i build the platform right the platform will be built based on the capability right uh, you use capability to build the platform but you, you need to make sure that uh, you will need to have more or uh, uh, more and more capability inside one platform, right? Rather than you this platform, you have uh, one or two capability, then you have a platform, you have one or two capability and, and, and when you combine all together, then you have a lot of platform, right? So, so it, it, it very much very, uh, similar to the way we build ecosystem in the past, right? That, is not, is, that doesn't work as well, right? So the platform that I mentioned here is that one platform you need to have many capability, as many as much as, as many as possible, right? So when you combine the platform together, you already have lost um, many capability to cover the whole uh, ZTX framework, right? So which means when you build the ecos digital ecosystem, you don't need to have so many platform. You you can just need several platform, right? Fewer platform to build the the ecosystem and the beauty of the platform is also automation. I will talk about that earlier, right? So, but but the way to choose the capability is that you and and the the, the innovation of that ecosystem provider in terms of zero trust, right? And, and it show you to the public, right? So then you can leverage on that. You will choose the uh, this ecosystem provider and choose the right uh, capability and, and, and uh, so-called technology uh, to, to, to build the ecosystem, right? But the, I, I add in one more, more point here, which is very important point, is uh, talking about uh, the this capability need to have the best support to operation. Why it's so important that I put it here? Uh, for I give you one example. Let's say this platform you have uh, fifteen, uh, I'll say twenty capability of zero trust, right? The other platform, platform number two, also have twenty capability of zero trust. So in terms of capability, it's equal of these two platform, right? But when talking about operation, the the platform number one can deliver twenty zero trust capability, but you can uh, only you know have five steps to do that, right? Why uh, the 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 platform number two also deliver twenty capability of zero trust, but you need to do it in twenty step, right? So in terms of capability is equal, but in terms of you know operation, you see the difference, right? What would you prefer, five step to make it done or twenty step to make it done? Of course, you you would need to go for the five step because complexity in the enemy of cybersecurity. Zero trust is the same. If you do it so complex, then your zero trust platform will be less effective, right? That, and and you, it, it, you will also increase the way that you, you know, operate the your zero trust platform and, and it will lead back to the zero trust uh, SOC security operation center where you still cannot, you know, fasten and shorten the MTTD and MTTR, right? It's, it's still very, very long, right? And it's no longer effective, right? So that's why when I mentioned about here is that you need to evaluate the vendor, the provider, right? And, and make sure that uh, the, the, they offer the most capability with the less uh, of uh, step of operation, right? You need to make it simple for operation, right? And easy for, for operation. Uh, this is very key highlight that I, I need to mention here, right? Okay, so... Uh, this is the high level. Okay, let's move on to the ecosystem, uh, the ecosystem. 
So in in the old day, you will have a legacy uh, cyber school ecosystem where you got you know a lot of point product, right? You have fiber, you have IPS, you have AV, you have uh, you know uh, um, uh, web proxy, you have DLP, you have uh, APT, right? So on and so forth, and you put all together in your environment, right? And and all is very distributed, right? There's no link. Uh, I I mean the deep link on the true link between on this component. And this is point product, right? And this all this point product is equal of uh each, to each other, right? No one plays the more important part uh, compared to the other, right? Uh, each one will play the important part in in its over in the set of the network or in the set of the location of organization, right? Then in that that the way that we build we build that ecosystem is the very very old, old, old way because if you still follow the path, you will see that the challenges will come to you because the more things will come, the more you put in the single product to address the new threat or the new attack technique, right? Then at the end of the day, when you look at, at the whole uh, environment and the whole ecosystem, you will see, wow, I have so many point products. I have so many policy. I, I, I have so many, you know, uh, uh, enforcement point. I, I need to, you know, have a, a, a really complexity in my operation and orchestration, right? So that one uh, is, is, is the old story already, right? So now with the Zestrus ecosystem, the way that you look at it, you should look like this. The eco, Zestrus ecosystem is the platform, but it's a platform, but it's comprised several platforms inside it, right? I, I, I mentioned here several, which mean maybe one or two or three, but don't, don't make it 10 or 20 like before, right? It can be maybe up to five, right? But uh, it's okay, but don't, don't make it 20, 30, uh, like, 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 the old, like the old day, right? Make as it gets from several platforms. But the way we approach like this, this is my per, for my personal uh, practice. Uh, rather than you build everything, you know, equal to each other, it's uh, what we call the outside in approach, right? Let's change the way. Zero Trust is the inside out approach, which means you should build the core first, the core of the Zero Trust ecosystem, right? And this core had to be very, you know, uh, robust had to be a, a big platform, has to be uh, uh, have many uh, Zetra capability in, built inside already, right? And, and this uh, Zetra capability had to be a best of breed uh, 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 capability, right? Uh, 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 in the industry and, and at this moment, right? So that you, you very logically, when the core is robust, which means the whole platform, and when you expand it out uh, from the inside to the outside, then you have very robust and strong zero ecosystem, and of course, comprehensive as well, right? Then you're starting to put in the, the edge platform, several edge platform, and make sure that this core platform have open API so that it can well can have well integration uh, with the between the core and the edge, and also the edge to the core. And not only that, the edge also, this edge platform also talk uh, in bidirectional way with the other edge as well. Right, so because you can have that capability, which means you will have a comprehensive automation capability across uh, uh, the whole Zetrus ecosystem. You will have the deep integration between the, the the platform because now it's a two way of, of integration, not just one way like before. Right, in the old day when you talk about integration, normally it's one way. Okay, this one talk the other to, to the other one, and that's it. Or even the that one. Uh, responding back, but it's, in, it's not because that the, the, the original one triggered our original request, right? So it, 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 it doesn't work that way in, in the social ecosystem. Uh, in the integration need to be both, both way, bidirectional and deeply integrated, right? And which, of course, between a platform, not the point product, right? And the automation here, you can achieve by leveraging on the digital ecosystem, and you can automate the, all the things that you need. You talk about prevention, you can talk about detection and respond. Right now, you can do that in an, an automated manner across your organization, right? And talking about collaboration. So in the old day, if, uh, the, the silo of uh, point product and approach, it will not share the context. It will not share the threat intel from one point product to the other point product, right? But now with the Zero Trust ecosystem based, uh, built based on the platform, uh, the threat intel and the context sharing can be done across the different platform, right? It's different several platform across 
the organization. You, know, you can also can do that, right? And the last part talking about operation orchestration. Uh, with this digital ecosystem, it will help you to simplify the set up, right? Like I mentioned earlier, you you have uh, you know lesser you know point of control uh, or, 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 or management. You have lesser you know sets of policy across the platform, and of course because of that, you also have automation capability, so you will have a better security effectiveness. So uh, security effectiveness is one of the very important factor that's almost forgotten in cybersecurity, right? We talk a lot about technology, we talk a lot about a solution, right? But at the end of the day, we rarely asking the question to ourselves is that, is, this, is, the, is, uh, uh, is the, the things that we're doing or the, all the technology that are using are effective enough, right? So the effectiveness, we mean, uh, uh, are we using the most of all the technology the, 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 that we can have, right? So typically you have the technology, but normally you don't use it uh, to 100%, right? So because of that, you, will, will, you cannot optimize the, the, the performance, you cannot, you know, uh, uh, increase your security posture to the, 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 the best as possible, right? So the, uh, with, with Zero Trust, you will see the value of the security effectiveness, right? Because of this Zero Trust ecosystem can show you the value, that kind of value. And of course, return on security investment, the ROC, right? You easily can, can, uh, can, can get it in a shorter time frame, right? Compared to the old, the old day, right? And in the left-hand side, I also give you the mapping, how this Zero ecosystem, you can put in line well together with the Garner Adaptive Security Architecture, right? So you, we, if, if, if your organization already, you know, have some mapping or already have some, you know, Adaptive Security Architecture built based on the, the, the Gartner model, then the Zero ecosystem will fit, will fit nicely into that architecture as well. And you will see that's a well alignment between Zero Trust architecture and so the, this Gartner Adaptive Security Architecture as well, right? So because why I, I put this way, because a lot of customers asking me, uh, asking me, wow, uh, uh, I already have, you know, uh, a lot of things with Gartner uh, uh, architecture, uh, Square architecture. So now you tell me about so adopting Zero Trust, which means that I, I need to throw away all, all the things that I, I invest in the Gartner Adaptive Security Architecture. No. The, the, it's not that way, right? On the ecosystem and architecture from Zero, you can fit nicely and have a, a, a mapping together with what you have today, right? You don't need to throw it away. You just remap it from the this Ghana, another school architecture, uh, point back to the control that you will use, uh, map it back to the control that you will use in the Zero architecture. Then you're fine, right? You're ready to go, okay? So uh, the question is, so why the platform approach for Zero Trust, right? So uh, uh, Forrester already mentioned it uh, to, uh, in uh, the, 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 the last two reports, right? So the first one um, is a two in 2019. So I, I take a green shot here and you see, right? Uh, this is for the, what Gardner mentioned, right? Gardner mentioned that the platform are powerful, right? And uh, you will need to use the platform, right? To, to, to achieve for zero trust. And uh, they can even mention that uh, you should look in for uh, uh, organizations seeking to enable their trust as the long-term goal can get real benefit from choosing a single vendor. But that vendor need to you know, offer integrated and real-world capability, not just marketing. All right, so this is from Ghana, uh, from, from Forrester, right? So what does it mean? So this platform can be you can have a single vendor or what we call the single uh, uh, standard ecosystem platform provider to give you the Zero platform. And this Zero platform can cover not just single copular of ZTX. This single platform coming from this uh, ecosystem platform can cover multiple copular at the same time. So if, if, you, if you can have that, which means that you now you have lesser platform, right? To cover the whole ZTX environment, right? It will be easier for you, and you will, will, will the integration between the platform is also simpler, right? So this is what Forrester mentioned in uh, 2019, right? 
Now with the uh, the new um, latest one uh, of report for the zero, zero trust extended uh, ecosystem platform provider evaluation in uh, in 2020, right? So Ghana also uh, repeat again, right? So if you can see from here, I, I take a screenshot from the first page of this uh, report, right? Uh, if, if you have this report, okay, but if you don't have, uh, later I will send these two report for you. I have that uh, to share with you, right? So Ghana also, uh, Forrester also mentioned again, delivering their trust security demand a platform, not a portfolio approach, right? So when we talk about portfolio here, which means the point product, the single product, the silo product, right? Not the platform. So, so this is very, you know, they re-emphasize again the, the, the leveraging on the platform to build your Zetra's ecosystem, right? Okay, so let me uh, clear the drawing. Okay, let's move to the next one, okay? Okay, so uh, because uh, Forrest, I also mentioned about that, right? So, no. We just go for the platform, right? So, uh, but the next question is, okay, now I agree that I need to go for the platform, but what should I do next? What should I do first, right? So this is my, I would say, six step for the uh, a, a more practical approach uh, as a low level, right? So uh, the first thing I can see is really value to organization is that uh, you should conduct or perform the zero standard uh, security maturity assessment, right? So in this uh, zero to extended security maturity assessment, you will need to do it in two levels, the high level and the low level. So what does it mean? The high level is mean that you need to do it uh, in a very short time frame as a very high level approach so that you can quickly identify your uh, maturity level uh, from a high level point of view, from a high level perspective first, right? Then after you have that, then you can continue with the low level where you where you will go to each and every core pillar and, and do the assessment on that based on the uh, very you know a uh, uh, granular set of question you need to answer it right and the 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 way the result of the answer uh, right will will map to the scoring right and at the end of the day you combine all the scoring uh, you will know your maturity level uh, which means your security baseline right so um uh, you need to do that uh, both, right? Uh, as a high level, as a low level. So as a high level, why you need to do that? Because you also need to show that uh, result to the board of director, to the business stakeholder, so that they will adopt and buy in their trust, right? And they sponsor for the zero trust strategy and roadmap for you uh, that I mentioned earlier, right? But because when you, you present to the management, you need to have something in, to show, right? And, and but but don't use the don't use the low level assessment to show the, the business management right use the high level first right easy for them to understand and and, and agree right and support uh, our our zero trust uh, mature uh, strategy and roadmap okay then after you do the high and low right then you will see the baseline right so based on that you already uh, you know initially identify some kind of protect survey right so protect survey is a zero trust terminology, right? So uh, I, I, I put it here for easy for you to, to understand what is protect survey. I would normally I call it DAAS or in short DAS, right? So D which means data, uh, A which means application, and the, another H would mean the access. Uh, access here may mean digital access, right? And, the, uh, in, and in some cases, if you put zero trust to the OT environment, I mean uh, operational technology environment, then the access can be physical asset as well, right? your machine, your PLC, right? Something that is also uh, mapping to their trust because the the, uh, the, uh, the impact of the attack, right? Can cause the damage to the to the physical assets and it will cost the money to you as well. In norm normally in the OT environment, right? So if you put zero trust to the OT, then this asset can also include the physical assets as well, okay? Uh, your, your P uh, I mentioned earlier, your IAD, your PLC, your sensor, right? And the last part is services, right, as well, right? So uh, once you define the protect survey, you will see, okay, I need to see the transaction flow. So this is the protect survey, right? Transaction flow is the sub, the, the one who, you know, have the, 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 the transaction to the protect survey, right? Have interaction to the protect survey, right? So we need to see, right, who and what and, 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 and why, right? 
uh, assessed and, and, and approach to this protest of faith, right? That's why, and you need to do that. Uh, you need to see all the transaction flow across your organization, not just a, a small portion of your organization, right? So this is a very good thing. Um, normally, the this transaction flow, you can start from the business flow, right? The business flow or the business process, you have the business process, then you map it to business flow. This The business flow, then map it back to transaction flow, right? Uh, just in case you don't know how to do that, right? Uh, talk with the business uh, people, understand the business process and, uh, and, and see the business flow, right? right? Uh, in, in the IT environment and map that business flow in the IT environment, map it back to attention flow in the zero trust environment, okay? Then uh, the four things is, okay, now I, I, now I have protect surface. I have transition flow, then, okay, I, I will need to see which, which core pillar of the ZTX framework, right? Uh, participate in this transition flow, right? And I need to map the control to this core pillar, to, to this associate core pillar, right? So by doing that way, you are building the Zetra architecture, right? And, uh, and once you have that, you need to build the Zetra policy, right? For the transition flow across the core pillar. You put the control in the core pillar and you build the policy on top of the control, right? Uh, to enforce uh, the, the, the policy to the core pillar. And also you use the, you will map the capability of the Zetra platform to enforce that policy as well, right? And the last part, which is the last but not least, very important is that we, you need to have a continuous visibility and analytic and automation of question for the whole organization. Uh, this is very important, right? No, no matter uh, how big is your transition flow, right? How many policies that you have, you need to have that from very first beginning. This is very important because it's the integral part and a, one of the more important integral part of the Zero Trust Extended Framework. Uh, that's why I strongly recommend you need to have uh, at least, right? If, if you cannot have automation or orchestration from first beginning, at least please have the visibility analytic, right? From very first beginning, when you're starting to, 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 to build your Zero Trust architecture, uh, because you will see the value, right? Of, of, of doing that way, right? You, because, as a CISO or, or even at the, the person who in charge for their trust, visibility is a top, uh, you know, important uh, criteria that you need to achieve, right? Without visibility, you cannot see things happen inside your zero architecture, right? You may have the control, but you don't you don't see how how your control is behavior behaving. Uh, you don't see how things happen after you enforce the control, right? And because you have certain control, so many control, right? And so many policy across the whole copula and across the transition flow. Then you need to have a single a pane of glass for the visibility and analytic, right? With AI machine learning to help you, you know, pick it up the most anomaly incident right, across your zero trust uh, uh, environment, right? So that is very important. And uh, I, I will say uh, visibility is had to be from the very first beginning, okay? So, Let's uh let's move on to some more detail on, on this uh, low level. Okay. The first one is uh, what we call the zero extended security maturity assessment, the high level, right? Uh, I go to a high level first. Okay. So uh in the left hand side is the we call the maturity more uh, level, right? So again, like uh, I mentioned earlier, uh for us to say you have beginner level, you have intermediate level, and you have advanced level, right? And the first I also mentioned that um, in order to, to, to bring up the level from the beginner level to the intermediate level, the best way is that you need to address the complexity, right? And, and, and in, a, in the inefficiency that you have in the beginner level by consolidating, consolidating the POI product and the POI vendor to the, to the platform, to the lesser platform, right? So, and... Uh, you can you should prioritize the the, the 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 provider that give you the more capability right so we, we, we what we say here is that uh more with less right you have more capability but you have less platform right you have more capability but you have less vendor you have less uh ecosystem provider right so this is the way that you can move from beginner to intermediate and of course using the same same methodology to move from intermediate to advanced Right. So in the advanced level, you can see that uh, uh, in the intermediate, uh, you should uh, adopt right uh, 
a, a portion of the automation already, right? But in the event level, now you can maximize the automation or orchestration, right? Of course, visibly uh, and analytics, like I mentioned earlier, had to be in, in, in a little bit portion in the beginner, and you, you need to, to, to you know, have a, a make it complete, right? In the, the intermediate, that's the best way. So when you may move to the advanced level, uh, you will move up all the capability of the core pillar to the top, right? And also you can and, and uh, uh, have a full uh, and optimize the analytic and automation at the same time in, in the advanced level, right? So in the advanced level, uh, you you straight you can see that you can automate right the the, the complex operational tasks and you can uh, automate the orchestration for the human the analytics, right? And and also the 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 not only the the, the human tax but also the machine tax which is the playbook right that you will see that uh, we will use in your zero soft right to to automate that and 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 to respond back to the incidents that, that you see uh, across your zero environment right so as the high level uh there are several questions uh that um you can see on the left uh right hand side right so uh, with this uh, uh high level question you need to answer you need to give the answer to this and I already divide into the you know the copula. You see the 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 copula in the left hand side. Actually, the in this one, uh, the 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 set the the, the copula uh, number six and seven are already combined, right? The visibility analytic plus the automation of question are already combined together, right? And mm -hmm. and and that's one we normally we call it the zero sock, right? And uh, later, right? But focus on the 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 copula, uh, like data. Like network, like people, workload, and device, right? And uh, from each each copula, the uh, very simple. You need to answer three questions, right? So this is the set of question uh, that uh, I, I give example here for you, right? Actually, uh, it's uh, recommended by Forrester as well, right? Uh, and and you can answer that, right? So it's a very high level question. And when you give the answer, you say okay, I yes or no, or if yes, uh, fully yes or partially yes. Right, of course, no. If we say no, it's a fully no or a partially no, right? So you can provide the answers into this question, and and after that, you 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 it will map to the score as well. Let's say if you answer on for data, on the three question, you answer yes, which mean right, you have three point for instance, right? Or normally you can uh they they would uh, would say one two three, right? Level one two three. Uh, the first question one score one point. The second question is two point. The third question is three point. So if you achieve all of them, you have one plus two plus three within six point, right? So you can do that. So six times six is 36 point. So if I can tell you, rarely uh, I can see the, uh, the organization that can have 36 point from Vesper beginning. I, I never see that. I never see that uh, in, across Southeast Asia with all the projects that I've been done within the last seven years, right? So typically you can, can uh, initially you can starting from, let's say, you know, 10, 15 points, something like that, right? Uh, or if you can achieve, let's say, each, at each copula, you only uh, say yes to the first question, right? Which is very, uh, very much on a beginner level that you will have like, like six points, right? You know, so, so, uh, um I, I i later after this session i will give the copy of my presentation today uh, with this question so you can take a look on this question and uh, give your answer all uh, right uh, have the answer for your organization and and, where, and you can see as a high level uh where is your uh, maturity level okay um for the low level you will do a lot of things right uh I will not put it here because that's the scope of the Zetra Consulting Partner or uh, Zetra Consulting Advisor. Uh, they they should have a very you know in depth uh, uh, question or assessment, right? So they will sit down together with you, you know, several hours or even one or two days, uh, try to understand you know your your business uh, process, your uh, business requirement uh, and also uh, uh, discuss with you and also leveraging on their detailed sets of question of course mapping back to this copula from zero trust and uh, based on that they are able to give you the scoring and, and maturity level and some uh, guidance and recommendation how to move up uh, from the your existing level to the upper level right so that's one uh, is a what we call the uh, uh, zero trust security assessment uh, maturity assessment in the low level right that's one uh, is uh, 
out of my scope. <laughs> it's the scope of the consulting, uh, the consulting partner or the consulting advisor, right? They, and they normally they will have a, a service for that. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so again, like I want to tell you, uh, even Forrester can also give that uh, service to you as well, right? And and the, uh, so okay. Um, this is the high level one. I, I will not go into each and every question, right? Because I believe I we don't have time for that, right? But uh, just an overview, right, uh, of the question here for you already, so you can take reference later on to answer, uh, try to answer that, okay? Okay. So uh, I will give you a, a real world sample use case right, of using uh, Zero Trust. So I, I take a very you know uh, common use case that everybody want to protect the user go to internet, right? I see that uh, you know a request, right? Uh, in, in in each and every you know project I in, involved, right? So it's a very frequent, very common uh, requirement from business, right? I, I need to get my user to go internet so that they can assess the proper application uh, that, that uh, you know, sub use for business, they can set the proper data and information so that they can, uh, you know, have the, you know, productivity, uh, they can maximize your pro their productivity and they have, maybe they can have a new idea or uh, in innovative uh, idea to, to improve the business as well, right? So when you, when you receive this request, right, what should you do? The first step you need to define the protect surface in in this scenario or in this business use case or in this business scenario, right? So on the left hand side you have the user, on the right hand side you have internet, right? So where is uh, my protect surface, right? So I already list down from here. Uh, the protect surface also have you also have protect surface on the user side and you also have protect surface on the internet side as well. So talking about the protect surfaces in the user side, right? So uh, because the user also need to use the devices, right, to access the internet. So in, in this scenario, you also need to have device, right? So in on the device, you also have uh, some kind of corporate data, right? So you need to protect that because when the users connect to internet, right, you may have the chance that this corporate data, right, will move to internet together, right? So you need to you need to protect that. That one is also a protect surface, right? So another one, the protect surface we're talking about the application or the service that the users use to access internet, right? You will need to ask the question, what are these applications? What are these services, right? You have to name it. You cannot say, oh, I, I just allow you to go to internet, right? You cannot, you, cannot, you cannot do that way, right? We need to make sure that we know exactly which application or which service, right, uh, allowed by these users. Uh, based on, of course, based on our enterprise policy to accept internet. You need to have that in detail, right? Because based on that, you need to protect that as well, right? And you also have the access here. The access here is the device that you use to access the internet. The device can come in multiple form factor. You can use, let's say, the window machine, or you can use Mac machine, you can use Linux machine, you can use your iOS or Android, uh, you know, a tablet, or phone, right? Different type of devices here. We need to, to have a list of detail, right? Which device that the users are using here, right? And you also need to protect that, right? As a device level, right? And of course, talking about, because we have user. Users, which means that you have identity, right? Or we call digital identity, right? Uh, to, to identify the user, right? Who you are, and, and you need then the user need to prove uh, I am who I am, right? So based on that, uh, the digital identity of the user is also the protect surface. Why? Because if, if the if you use if the this digital identity uh, can be can come in the multiple form, like uh, the users and a password, right? And 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 guess if the this users and password is uh you know is uh it leak or, 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 you know, uh, have been stolen from the user uh, uh, side to the internet side, right? Then the, the attacker or, or on the internet can leverage on this credential, right? To, to, uh, to, to, to use that access back to the machine and so access back to the, the other portion of the organization that, that allow that credential to access, right? So that's one, the digital identity we don't need to protect. And this digital identity, we, we, we can talk about credential and, and other form of the, uh, the identity as well, okay? 
So on the internet side, we also, because when the user accepts the internet, right? You will need to get something back, right? Uh, it can be, you know, a, a, a file, it can be a, a, a content, a streaming in the uh, content format, uh, it can be a, a script or, 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 or it can be a uplast, a Java uplast or JavaScript, whatever, right? We are set to, or we can get it back, right? So we need to make sure that that's, that's one had to be a, a, another protect surface, but, but the, the protect surface from the internet side, right? We need to make sure that the data and content that downloaded from the, or, 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 or from the users from internet, right? Uh, we need to see that we need to, 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 because we don't have trust on that, right? We cannot trust. We cannot trust the data and content download from the internet, right? By the user. That why, that's why we call zero trust, right? Uh, one of the things uh, uh, when you define the protest surface and also the transition flow and the control is that use the question, right? Use the question is that uh, can we trust blah, 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 right? If we cannot trust, then what should we do, right? And if, if even after we put in the control, then what if this control fail? Or what if this control is bypassed, right? So all these sets of questions will be used when you, you perform the, the, the in practice, right? Uh, uh, approach for the zero trust uh, approach, right? So based on this protect survey, then you need to define next step is the, what we call the, the transition flow. So in the internet, right? Between the user internet, you will have two transition flow. The one transition flow I will call the user go to internet or normally we call it outbound or upload, right? And the other transition flow is back from the internet, uh, back to the user, or we call it inbound or the download portion, right? So this is the transition flow, right? And uh, once we know that this is the transition flow that we have in this business scenario, okay, let's move on to the, the, the third part, which is we map the core pillar of the ZTF framework with the proper control. Now, if you see the control I put here, one in the, the blue blue color and one is the red color. So the, the control I put in the blue color is the, for the alpha, which means the users go to internet for that transition flow, right? And the control I put in the red one uh, is the, for the, the second transition flow, which means from the inbound, right? The internet back to the user, right? So I, I, in this control, I, I, I would need to identify what are the associated copular observers that involve into this transition flow. You have people, right? Of course, because you need the people, which is the user. Now the user will trigger the request to internet. We use our application to accept the internet. That's why I, I need to have the, the people here, right? You also have the devices because the people need to use the device access to internet, right? And, and I mentioned earlier about the type of device, right? You also have the network because without the network, right? Between your user and internet, that if there's no connectivity, then you can access the internet, right? Which means the network is there. And the, the, the four key pillars is the data, right? Because like I mentioned earlier, you have data on, on your, 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 your device, on, on your uh, device that you're using to access the internet, right? That kind of data you also need to protect because that's a corporate data, right? So the control I put here is a sample control you will have more than that, right? Because I don't have enough <laughs> uh, uh, space, right? To put on uh, uh, some, some more, but, uh, but this is a, a, a sample. So you can take a look, let's say, okay, with the people, you need to have uh, the control for authenticate and authorize the user, right? And you also need to do the mapping with the authorized user with the associate application that you allow to assess, right? And uh, you need to have control to prevent the credential stolen, right? Because uh, like what I said earlier, if the credential is stolen, then you will have a, a, a bigger impact, right? Moving on, especially if these people are the, the VIP people, right? Uh, guess what? If these people is CEO, these people is CFO, right? Uh, and also member of beauty, they, they are the, the top, uh, you know, uh, people in the, in the organization that can access almost the, the top trade secret, the top you know, business plan, uh, which is uh, just uh, not, uh, not official or public yet, right? Uh, something that, that uh, you know, very uh, 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 confidential information for organization, right? Uh, that no, no one else can assess just like that, right? And if they, they can have that happen, wow, the, the very big impact right, to organization, right? The devices, as a devices level, uh, 
there's a multiple control that we need to, to put on. Uh, also, as, as the OS level, or uh, we call the user space, right? We need to have a control on that. You also need to control uh, as a kernel level because you know that with the previous escalation attack, right? If the, the kernel is compromised, then officially you can control the whole device, right? Then you also need to have granular control over the application, the process, the memory, the cache, the registry, right? So, and the file level, uh, so on and so forth. So, so many things that you need to take a look at here, right? And also not in the devices, uh, you also need to pay attention about the external device, the plug into your, your device as well. Let's say the USB or the thumb drive or the removal drive as well, right? And that's one where you need to have control over that because it will impact your, your, your device, right? At the network side, uh, you also need to identify the application and service that used by the user, right? So you can have proper control over that. Uh, you also need to have control over the, the, the destination URL that uh, in the internet, uh, the destination, you know, domain of, uh, to the internet, the destination IP to internet. And of course, uh, you also need to have uh, uh, the way to prevent the no and uh, no threat. Why you need to have that in this transition flow? Remember, uh, one imp important case is that, uh, I, I don't know if, if you remember, but uh, there's several cases where the users it compromised, right? And controlled by the remote attacker and the attacker use that as the use that device of the user as a member of a botnet and go out and attack the other organization, right? So when the other organization, they do the, in, the, 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 the deep investigation, they trace it back that they know that attack coming from your IP, your public IP or, or your IP range, right? And that IP range, you know, specifically to say that this is your, coming from your organization. Then you will go, fall into a very, you know, challenging situation where you, it's not easy for you to prove to the law enforcement and, 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 and also to the, to the other organization that, no, we don't have any intention to attack you, right? Uh, but we, but, but the, the things that even the users, right, have no intention to attack the organization, right? But they are compromised, they are in the control of the attacker to do that, right? So we need to prevent that situation as well. That's why in this flow, we need to make sure that if any, you know, no and, and unknown threat that lead to the C2 control, we need to stop that so that that, that scenario won't happen, right, in the future, right? And of course, uh, prevent patient zero, why I put it here, very important, because you know, if the users compromise or for, for whatever reason, it can, you know, lateral movement and uh, impact the, the, the whole environment later on. So we need to make sure that uh, we can prevent, I think, from the first beginning. So that's one B, uh, zero, patient zero, right? It will reduce the, 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 the risk and also impact, right? And uh, talking about data, you need to encrypt the uh, uh, corporate data, right? So you can encrypt even as the file level or even as the, you know, a, a hard disk level, something like that, right? Uh, and you also need to have some kind of a pre, uh, control to prevent the data loss uh, uh, intentionally or unintentionally, right? And the digital rights control here also uh, makes sense, right? As well, right? On the other side, in the inbound, you also need to have, you know, content data filtering in terms of data. So it, it will check all the content that, that download back from the internet, right? And in the network portion, we also need to make sure that uh, if I, we need to control the, the, the external URL, uh, the domain IP coming back from the internet, right? Or even sometimes it's a geolocation, right? You need to see that if, if this is, you know, this is a harmful, this is uh, a malicious, you need to stop it, right? From, from the, this uh, transition flow, right? And uh, so on and so forth. And of course, uh, in, this, in the network, right? Both, both transition flow, you also need to control, have a control what we call the increase, the network visibility, right? You need, because your network, uh, in the network, you also have uh, two types of uh, traffic. You will have clear test traffic and you also have encrypted traffic, right? So what I'm trying to say here is that you will need to have network visibility, not only for the clear test, but also for your encrypted traffic as well, right? You need to see things inside your encrypted traffic, right? Uh, especially ASL, right? Uh, traditional and the standard uh, ASL and TOS traffic. Because if you don't do that, then you cannot have uh, proper zero trust because you cannot trust the thing 
that go inside this tunnel. You cannot trust the thing got to go inside this uh, this uh, encrypted traffic or encrypted tunnel, right? That's why you need to find a way to see things inside and also apply the, the zero control over the traffic uh, in, inside that, that encrypted traffic as well, okay? And uh, this is the control. Uh, there's so many control, right? I, I just take a, a quick example here for you, right? And the way how I define the control by, you know, simulating the, 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 the use case and scenario and also asking the question. By asking the question, right? Uh, you, 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 get, you can de define the control. And also, once you have the control, you will map the capability, or we call technology, right? Uh, with the control, proper control. So uh, previously, I talked about authentication. I talked talk about authorization. Then the tech capability we should have here somehow like, you know, MFA, uh, multi-factor authentication, or single sign-on, and so, so. Uh, in, in, in the later approach, we should use something like password list, right? Password as well to reduce the impact of the uh, so, uh, credentials stolen, right? And uh, as a device level, you may, may think about like uh, things like EPP and proposition platform, or now recently we talk about XDR that also highlighted by, by Forrester as well, uh, standard detection and response, and uh, some other things like, uh, you know, file integrity monitoring, uh, FIM, something like that, right? At the network side, uh, normally we'll talk about you know next generation firewall right because it's the best way to en enforce the 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 zero trust capability and, and also control on the network. But uh, try to leverage more on the AI and ML together so that you can have you know better application control because you need to see the application. You also need to have you know the the, the on, on the capability just like you know advanced threat prevention, UL filtering, DNS security. This is on the industry term, right? And uh, you have to have the blacklist uh, of the IP of the domain. Uh, URL, you, you, you can prevent uh, the, from, from very first beginning. And uh, back to the, the Im, improve or uh, in enhance the network visibility I mentioned earlier is uh, what we call SL decryption, right? Try to uh, perform SL decryption as much as you can. Of course, you cannot decrypt SL 100% for sure because there's some limitation uh, of the application as well. But they try to use, you know, subpinning, they try to use SDS, Right to do so that when you decrypt SL, it will break the application, right? But in that case, okay, uh, you cannot put control into that one. You will put compensation control to the device, right? To make sure that you still can have the proper control uh, 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 on 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 the the the, cop, uh, the other copula. So that's one we call a compensation control, right? And the way that we do is that we we try to avoid the the duplicate control across the 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 uh, um uh, the, the in the same copula right you may have duplicate control uh bit in different copula that's fine because in some cases you need you will definitely need to do that right Be, uh, but but try to avoid the same control in within the 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 the, the single copula right which means that you don't need to use multiple port product anymore for the same uh, copula, right? You can use, just use a single platform, right? And in the data side, you can, may think about the, uh, the capability like data inscription, you know, enterprise DLP and the DIM, digital right management, something like that, right? And the and the other side, the capability for the inbound, so you can, can think about the term, uh, the industry term, uh, just like that, right? You can block uh, based on the geolocation or the domain, the URL, right? Uh, and uh, IP, etc. Yeah, you can also can do that to control from the, the the the, uh, the inbound uh, uh, transition flow, right? So um, and after that, you also need to put in what we call the visibility and analytics and automation or orchestration. Right? So the best way to do that is that uh, if you see the things that I draw here, um, okay, okay. So uh, you see here, right? And you see here. So uh, with all this capability, with and with all the the, the copula of ZTX that I have here, right? Or I need to have the, the, vis the visibility and analytics across these copula by, you know, I need to get on the data that I have, right? And I need to out have a, a way to automatically stitch on the data that I gather for continuously from the associate uh, copula in this scenario, right? In this scenario, I have uh, four copula to participate in, in this uh, 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 transaction flow, right? So uh, it will be people, it will be devices, network and data, right? I need to have uh, 
this all the data can come to to my you know somehow like a, a data lake right a big data environment uh where i have all this data gather and stick together right and stick together by applying the ai machine learning so i can have a you know perform i can perform analytic uh, capability and, and 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 quickly identify the anomaly incident right so this is under the concept of uh, of, of uh, visible analytic of, of zero trust right and uh, once i can do that i also can have a, a way to automate an orchestration so automate and question here mean i can automatically map the incident that i i i, I see based on the uh, visible analytic right I, I map it to the case and i can assign the people or the, the analyst uh, to have you know deeper investigation or, or forensic if, if needed and uh, can trigger the response or reinforcement back to the relevant zero pillar so which, which means that if i know uh this uh there's an incident across uh, happened in this uh, this uh business flow a uh, user the internet right uh, and this uh, with these two transition flow uh inbound and outbound right then i will know okay uh which one I need to do uh, which control or the enforcement that I need to put, uh, re I need to reinforce on the people. I need to reinforce on the device. I need to reinforce on the network and I need to reinforce on the data, right? And, and I need to do it automatically. I cannot do it, you know, manually go to the, 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 the people uh, identity and do something and, and go to the device and do something. I need to go to the network and do something manually or even do something manually with data. It's not the purpose of zero trust. You need to do it automatically, right? That's the purpose of zero trust, right? So in this way, for instance, if you know that that this users, uh, it, uh, this machine is divided, compromised, and uh, you can see that that's that is a uh, um, uh, uh, phishing frame that having the username and a credential of the the people already submitted uh, through the phishing site, right? But the, the as the network portion, you you are able to see that and stop that, then. The, you need to trigger the playbook to say, okay, I, this people's already compromised. The credential is stolen. I need to lock it out from the environment, right? And 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 I need to disable the account and even ask the people to you know change the password, uh, right? So that the previous credential cannot go no go no, can no longer be used, right? Even they they have uh they, they have been stolen, right? And I can also say, okay, uh, because the device is compromised, I need to isolate this device. So that the there's no lateral movement from this device to other devices or, or even across the other network to my uh, critical data, right? And in the network side, I need to make sure that uh, this device cannot go anywhere except uh, you know can access only to my uh, SOC. So that the analyst and the forensic people from the SOC can have remote control to the devices and do the proper tax, right? And of course, from the data portion, we also need to enforce something to say okay because this uh, device is a uh, uh, compromise i need to, to double check whether any of my data is compromised or not right so you can enforce the 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 the, the enforcement to the, the the data encryption or even the dlp policy to, to double check again and, and give to give the feedback to you right Some, something like that but all the things that i mentioned it had to be done in, in an automatic manner right not you know uh manual uh, like before right so this is uh, the different thing uh, I, I would say it's totally different it will save a lot of you know time effort and and resources for the organization in in terms of human and uh, and also the timing as well right so uh, a lot of things right a lot of benefit here okay so uh this is uh, just a, a sample a very simple sample of uh of uh, how i i see the the mapping from business use case uh, mapping down to the protect surface to the transition flow uh, mapping with the core pillar of the ztx right put in the, the proper control and also uh, map it back to the capability right so that you you can use this one and put into your architecture right and 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 starting to uh, use the platform adopt the platform right and make it work right and so this is a, a very quick one um you, there's many transition flow in your environment to be safe right some I have been working with some organization where I can see your multiple hundred of uh, of the transition flow in the environment, and and we need to sit down all together and point out each and every transition flow. And I, I do the same like this, right? 
replicate uh, again and again and again, right? And, and after you do that, you can have a put, you can put in an Excel file or you can put in a, in a Microsoft Word document and make it as your baseline, right? And, and you're starting to do uh, the improvement in, in the future based on the outcome from the visibility analytic and automated orchestration. Uh, uh, normally we call it the Zetra soft in the future, right? So this is a continuous and uh, 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 process, right? Uh, we, we don't we don't we don't just restrict the zero trust uh, 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 control uh, and, and static subset, right? Once you can have something new comes in and and based on the outcome that we see in the visibility analytic and automation orchestration, you might adjust the the control. Maybe you you change the control or you add in new control, right? Or even some in some cases. You can remove the control because the, that control is no longer you know relevant right so and, and when you change the control you also need to change the capability right and, and, and of course i believe the uh, the copyleft is still there but you need adjust on the control and also adjust on the capability right you is more properly uh, de depends on the latest uh threat landscape and also the latest uh, incident happen in your whole environment right so um okay uh, you you can use this methodology to you know replicate to the other uh, 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 um, transition flow right in your RNH and you already have that you can you can use this one to approach as well. So some key takeaway uh, is here. So uh, again, the roadmap is very important, right? It's a vital to uh, the achieve their trust, right? And and try to you know uh, see the, the define the maturity level. So uh, and and discover your starting point of the trust journey. Uh, by leveraging on the 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 Zetra's extended maturity maturity assessment, right? At least as a high level first, right? And uh, prepare all on with the, this assessment and uh, your detail, uh, you know, Zetra strategy and roadmap, and present it to the board or director or the stake or business stakeholder to get the sponsorship, to get the an endorsement and and uh, support for our Zetra journey. And uh, once you have that, you know, green light. To go, then you will come back and more, do in more detail, right? For identify the protect surface, uh, identify transition flow, uh, put in the control, and you know build the policy and uh, and, and use the capability of zero platform to enforce the policy, and of course, are uh, continuous uh, having the visibility and uh, analytic uh, automation orchestration for the whole organization, right? And the last part, um, uh, very easy to remember about the, your zero trust uh, journey is the ABC. So what does it mean by ABC? A Adopt their trust, right? B build the zero trust uh, architecture, uh, strategy, architecture, and capability. And C commit to your zero trust uh, journey, right? So uh, A, B, C is very important as a as, as a, a, a north star, right, for your zero trust journey. So uh, please uh, follow that north star, okay? And uh, yeah, so um, it's the end of my you know presentation this afternoon. So I will go and and see if you have any uh, you know question. Uh, there, uh, there's a lot of questions here in the chat. So let me take a look at that and I'll answer to you. Um, okay. Uh, you can can also you know put in the chat and also have the open mic to, to ask me as well. So the question from uh, Poland say, uh, can you share what are the technology or cybersecurity solution to implement and platform organization in order to implement the approach? What is the primary technology solution need to be considered to implement first? What is that to be considered? So uh, if, if you see on my previous uh, slide, you will see a lot of technology, right? Or, or the capability. So uh, uh, the capability that I mentioned earlier, right? We'll need to map with the copula, right? So don't, don't, don't go out and, 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 and map the technology first. If you see on from my five step approach, right? Technology and capability is will be the, the step number five, right? The you need to go with the strategy to, to architecture to the platform or uh, to the ecosystem to the platform, and the list is the technology and, 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 and capability, right? So please do that way. It's very easy because if you go and and and, and choose the technology first, in late in the later run, it's really hard for you to map it back to the strategy, map back to architecture, map back to the 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 the, the ecosystem, and you will fall into the the, the old trap of using multiple silo technology and solution, right? You go back to the basic, right? Back to the, oh, the old story again, the same old story again, right? So uh, I, I have seen a lot of organization doing that way. 
it's one work it will is and they waste a lot of money and time and effort so uh, uh the don't don't think about technology and solution first right think about the strategy the architecture the 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 the, uh, the ecosystem and the platform first right before going down to the capability or technology right uh that what is the primary technology solution need to be considered the implementation first actually there is no primary or secondary here but you can consider the things that are more important to you to put into the core platform that i mentioned earlier right some of the core platform that you can see is that you uh, is that can be your data it can be your network or, or identity of the people right so i have seen some some you know uh, um, with the some uh, smb or even the startup right they think about the people first because they they don't have big infrastructure they don't have big network they don't have big data right so with the startup or smb they 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 only have the the, the people right so uh, starting with the people portion uh, as a popular it's a first approach it's the right approach uh, for the smb and 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 the startup right and especially they leveraging on the cloud so you you think about the workload uh, on together uh, after the, the the people right Uh, for the big environment, uh, big organization, you need to to is is depend, right? It's depend on you know the business model. It's depend on the uh, industry as well, right? So in that case, uh, because it's it's it big organization, they they have different uh you know prioritization as well. So we need to sit down together with the organization to define what is the 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 focus first. And uh, one of the thing that you consider to implement first is that uh based on the outcome of the the zero security uh. Uh, maturity assessment, right? Based on that, you will know which is which. Which popular you already have the, some some intermediate or advanced uh, capability already, right? So if if you say okay, I already have the 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 the, the IAM uh, with the MFA and a single sign on, even using part with this. So with the people popular, you already have advanced level, right? So you you will will spend more time. An effort to the the other pillar that you still as a beginner, right, or even as intermediate, right. So in that case, if if you say, wow, the the my devices is still as a the beginner level, then uh, you focus on the device first, and the people you already advanced, you you will 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 focus later on, right. Uh, because uh, it's already an advanced level, right. So it's a it's a depend, right. But but my recommendation here is that perform the zero uh, security assessment, a uh, maturity assessment first, right. Then based on that, you you it's easy for you to identify which one you can uh, prioritize first. Okay. Uh, the second question, uh, if we want from uh Bong Fan Dom, if we want to control on uh, remote access. And VPN, what will be control or procedure from zero trust to be implemented, right? So, uh, if uh, you you hear the term we call the zero trust network access, right? ZTNA, right? So ZTNA is a portion of zero trust network and also a small uh, a smaller portion in in, in terms of zero trust architecture, right? So, uh, uh, remember that the the VPN is a uh, Uh, that's a uh, you try to leverage on the the Z ZTNA uh, approach, right? For the remote access, or uh, you can have some something called the uh, SDP software defined perimeter, which is uh, uh the term uh coined by uh by uh, Cloud Security Alliance. You can also take reference on that, and uh, you can have the control. If for the remote access, you can leverage on my methodology, right? So you will have, of course, remote access. You mean you have mobility user, right? Uh, so of course the people is there, right? You also have to have the network portion back from the remote users back to your environment, right? You also need to have you know the 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 device to connect also the data, right? So for for popular, we also participate into this uh, uh remote access VPN uh as as well, right? And, and use my methodology, you can define the the proper control, right? You can put put on top of that, okay? Uh, from the Zoom user. Thank you for your presentation. I like to seek for your answering below. Uh, what would you say ZTX is mandatory or nice to have approach that more or nation would consider as their environment? Um, I would not say it's the mandatory, right? But uh, it it means that uh, it depend on your on on organization uh, strategy and 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 goal as well, right? Uh, but based on what From my understanding, 
the organization that adopt zero trust and leveraging on the zero trust standard framework they will have uh, you know a better security posture and um, and having more benefit compared to the one uh, who not adopt it right uh, so that that's one and 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 you should take a look at the trend in in the uh, in, in in the market now um, you see that the government also adopts it right the the executive order from President Biden also mentioned that the U.S. government and the agency need to opt, adopt zero trust by by, by uh, early by the end of this this year, right? And not to mention about early of the 2022 as well. Uh, the, a lot of financial service uh, company also adopt zero trust already. You 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 have the name on the on more on the biggest bank right on on the world already leverage or zero trust for several years already, right? And uh, the other uh, uh, organization that also adopt uh, heavily on, on with zero trust is the you know the e-commerce uh, uh, sector as well, right? So, so uh, I would not say it's a mandatory because it depends on your choice, right? Whether whether you want to see the value of ZTX and you want to adopt it or not, right? So, uh, but but I would say it's a uh, I would say strongly recommend, right? Strongly recommend that that the organization should adopt ZTX. Because it, it will bring a lot of benefit and value, right? And the benefit value I mentioned earlier, this is at the top, uh, I would say top eight uh, benefit, but it's not just it. I have a very long list of the zero benefit I can send later uh, 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 as, as a pull update for, for this event. Okay. Um, uh, question number two uh, How long uh, do normally organization take time to be implemented and achieve zero trust strategy at advanced level? Uh, also, it depends on the, the size of the organization and also at the IT maturity level as well, and also the, 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 the culture of the organization as well. So uh, typically, uh, in, in average, is, uh, if, if your organization is, uh, is really advanced and you can make it, let's say, uh, I, I have some some um, example from Forrester, they will say uh, uh, you can have that within five years, right? So you can define this five year into uh, the smaller uh, milestone and, uh, and, and, and the time frame, right? So you can say, oh, okay, year number one, you want to achieve this, year number two, you want to achieve that, right? So this, uh, it, the five year is a, 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 a reference, but you can do it even shorter or you can do it even longer. Uh, is, is there's no again that's no super bullet because it depends on your organization how big is your organization let's say if the your organization is the smb environment and an organization and also the startup right then you can achieve the event level quickly because your environment is smaller the the, the you don't have much data you don't have a complexity network you don't have so many people you know the user and you don't have so many devices right and also even your workload on the cloud environment is not so big you right you're, let's say you have uh, 10 uh, or 20 workloads something like that so the scope of doing the trust for your smb or, or even startup right it much much smaller compared to the big organization right so so you are easy to adopt it uh, if you really want to adopt it right then you it, it's fast you can adopt the, the advanced level faster compared to the bigger one where you have so many people thousands of people thousands of devices a uh, ton of tera, terabyte of data, right? And, and you also have so many branches. You also have so many workloads on the private cloud, on the public cloud, so on and so forth, right? And, and not to mention about multi-type of the, the network, right? For, for the, 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 the smaller one, maybe they use physical network and, and the cloud network, that's all. But in the bigger one, you also might have your private cloud. In that public cloud, you also have the virtual network and also container run network, right? So the, the, the scope of the, the pillar will be, become big, bigger, bigger. It will take you some more time, right? Uh, number three, what was what would say uh, Zetra strategy would consider control outbound surface environment where our nation reliable on extended managed outsources to support uh, security operations such as MDR, uh, managed detection and response. Um, okay, so so in this case, when you have the, the MDR, which means a managed detection response, is more likely aligned to the visibility and analytic uh, portion in a, in, in, in a zero SOC, right? But rather than uh, you are the one who manage that, you are the one who see the data, you control the data, you control 
the the, the analytics, right? And, and also the, the rule that you put in for analytics, like normally we, we talk about uh, in, in terms of the uh, MDI, we talk about the BIOC rule, BIOC rule, uh, analytic BIOC rules, or the, the static IOC rule, right? IOC rule. So on this thing, if again, if you put into the hand of the external uh, contributor or the external partner, just like MDR, uh, then there will be a supply chain, right? Uh, situation in, 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 in this scenario. Then you need to have the, apply the Zetra concept here to say whether I can trust the MDR partner, right? Of course, you cannot trust. Even, then if you cannot trust, you need to have a proper uh, enforcement uh, for the access of the MDR for, for your environment right whether you you will, will need to make sure that okay if if the users uh from the mdr access to your environment right you you need to make sure that they have the proper authentication and authorization and based on that authorization you uh with this mdr panel you only allow them to access some certain part of your environment only not not the whole network not the whole uh organization right uh, because you you know okay let's say for mdr Okay, uh, I only allow you to uh, to 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 access to my you know the agent to collect the, the the data right, but I will not allow you to to access for the whole device for for instance right. I only allow you to collect the lock on the device, not the whole device for 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 instance. So you, you need to have, have proper control and and in this scenario also back to basic right. Uh, the the concept of cybersecurity, leave privilege and separation of duty as well right. Put them all together. Then uh, together with the zero trust mindset, right? Then you can have, you know, a proper control and enforcement for the MDR uh, partner, right? Uh, when you outsource the the, uh, the extended uh, 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 detection and response to the partner, right? So uh, try to do that uh, from very first beginning because you see the the supply chain attack, right? So this is an uh, example of supply chain attack if things happen, right? <laughs> right? If, if if the the user from the MBR the username password is compromised, right? Then the attacker can use the username password as the credential of the MBR user, right? To access to your environment. Then uh, if if you don't have that, you know, a proper uh, security, uh, I mean, zero trust mindset, right? And, and control in place, uh, then that is really dangerous, right? Now in that case, I would say the 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 um zero trust um uh, uh the control on the people portion which means authentication authorization and do the uh, zero trust uh, network segmentation as well to make sure that the MDI user can only access to a subset of your uh, network infrastructure uh, they cannot go out that subset they just stay in that subset the moment they go out you, you will block them right so even in the work case scenario the MDI partner uh, lost his credential right the attacker can only uh, go to that subset of the, the network and you you know isolate that network and you trigger on the, the other part like automation orchestration, right? To uh, to pick up the incident and, and stop them, right? Uh, you make, can may, in that case, uh, locking out the, the MDR user, right? Out of the, the authentication system as well, okay? Number four, uh, do organization require external assessor to certify or assurance of ZTX maturity level in a timely manner? Uh, at this moment, um, unlike, unlike the other uh, uh, um, standard, right? Like for, 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 for instance, uh, the, the, you have CIA star, you also have external assessor. You have PCI DSL, you need to have external assessor or even ISO 2701, you also have external assessor. Uh, to, to certify assurance for your certification, right? Uh, the, the ZTX maturity level, uh, I would say in if uh, a high level, you can do it by yourself uh, based on the, the question that I provided earlier. Uh, that also comes from first as well, right? But I, I got it, I share with you, right? They, they don't public it, but I got it because I'm a zero strategy. So I have that, I already share with you, okay? So it, it can help you a little bit, right? But but don't tell them that I give you, <laughs> okay? Uh, but the 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 third party, uh, the external assessor, um, uh, actually uh, there's no requirement. There's no requirement, right? It it depends on you if you want to 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 use or hide the you know the external trusted assessor to to do that for you. Uh, uh, if for instance, if you want to do it fast, right, and you don't have the 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 experience, you don't have the user. Or uh, the resources to do that, then the best way is to get the external 
uh, you know, um, uh, trusted uh, assessor for to help you to do that, uh, to, to help you to do the security uh, maturity level assessment in a low de low level detail that I mentioned earlier, right? Then they will, they, they will have to come out with a very detailed report uh, for to help you to build the baseline, I have you to define the 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 mature uh, the, the desired stake for for your environment and so the time frame right so and then that that one the 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 external assessor the external trust assessor they already have that uh, capability in place uh the report uh the guidance the the recommendation right a, a lot of things they they already got that that's is their professional uh expertise right so they do that for a lot of uh, your organization already. They have the real experience. They, 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 they can help you uh, if you want to achieve that in a very timely manner, right? Uh, then the third party is uh, good to go. I would say strongly recommend, right? But uh, that's not requirement. That is no mandatory about that, right? It's up to you if you want to do that or not. Okay. Um, any uh, question? Uh, I always uh, cover all the questions that I have in the chat. Uh, you can open your uh, microphone and uh, you know can can we can ask the question right or you can type in the the chat as well. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Philip. Uh, it's very comprehensive and all uh, and uh, concept about zero trust is. It look like you compress it hundred hours to become a two hours. Yeah. And clearly explain the point that uh, we need uh, or somehow anyone want to apply this concept, you know. Maybe I just have the last question because there is no more. So uh, the last question before we end our session. I just want to understand or to know about the relationship between uh, Zero Trust and all the available framework in place, like uh, NIST, like the ISO, and uh, the other, because, you know, most of the industry here, they already uh, comply with those uh, uh, framework standard already. So if they want to, to do the zero trust, and also it is not mandatory from the industry or not in mandatory from the regulator. So, so how, how, how relationship uh, that uh, you can explain uh, it? There? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, Farid. So that's a great question, right? It really, uh, it's it really a, a tough concern for the industry right now, right? Because now we talk about the regulation, we talk about framework, you have so many things, right? You have NIST cybersecurity framework, then you have regulation standard, right? You talk about ISO 2701, or even you, you move to the cloud, you have uh, 2070, uh, uh, 2017, 18, and uh, even CSA, you have the stars. So, so so many you know regulations so and so many even so many framework and concept now in our cybersecurity industry right so for one organization um, when they starting to look at uh, on this I, I would say messy uh, a, a lot of you know uh, framework uh, concept and, and regulation standard right so where where should they they, they start so um, they they can start like this. Uh, because the cyber school, zero trust is, a, is also at the strategic level, right? But but the other framework is not a strategic level. The, the, the other framework, like next service framework, is a little bit below the strategic level, right? And the other re, uh, the, the standard and, and regulation uh, is also normally mapping to our operation and also our process, right? Of course, people process technology, but uh, it 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 doesn't come too much and and really have a strong uh support and strong alignment with the business strategy uh, compared to zero trust right so you can start with zero trust first and when you build the architecture you can actually leverage some portion of the next cyber framework and the zero trust architecture and, and blend it together right um I, I have started some of my project right to do some mapping between uh, the zero trust uh, ZTX and uh, and, and this cyber sphere and some of that, I, I'm still on the way. And I, I can tell you, there's no no mapping in the industry right now. So I try to do it on my own <laughs> because yeah, I also have the request. On that, yeah, it's, right? it's great, you know. Yeah, but it's not easy because it, it really it really hard to, to to do that as well. But I try yeah. I try my best, right? Uh, I that's, think it's good if we have uh, this kind of mappings, and then uh, this guy will uh, easily to understand. Oh, we we follow this, also we comply to that as well. So they they might happy to do it something like that, you know. 
Yeah, yeah. So I think I think in 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 the long run, I think even in uh, in US, right? Uh, under the executive order from President Biden, I think they are also talking about you know a uh, streamline uh, between the zero trust and also the other framework as well. So I, I think that in in uh, let's wait for the year 2022. Uh, you will have more that uh, 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 official mapping, right? But um, at this moment, I'm trying to do some initial mapping as well. Uh, can cannot be, you know, 100%, right? Because it it, it quite, you know, diverse. And, uh, because it's a strategic level and come down architecture. This architecture also need mapping the framework, right? Then you need to pick right, this thing and this thing and try to map where is that uh, control in zero trap mapping to what control in the framework, the other framework, right? It, it will require you to, you know, read through on the zero architecture. Let's say the SP, AN Red, uh, AN Red 207, and you'll talk about the DOD, right? The yeah. reference architecture, you need to run through all of that as well. And so you also need to read over and over again the next cybersecurity framework as well, right? So a yeah. lot of things that I uh, that I need to do at this moment, uh, frankly, I don't have enough time because now there are a lot of things, but I try to do it, uh, uh, okay, I, I, I spend some time to, to, to do that as well. I already do some mapping, um, uh, not not only between zero trust but uh, some uh, between the next cybersecurity framework with uh, all the you know adoption as well, but uh, it's may not related to, to the case. So uh, I I I hear you. Okay, uh, let let me uh, figure it out. So well, because I I do believe at this moment that is no thing such uh, official mapping between zero trust uh, standard framework plus uh, compared to the NIST cybersecurity framework and also the ISO or PSA that there's no such that mapping yet at this moment. Yeah, yeah, it's great if you have that as a guideline yeah. for the security uh, folk uh, community to look at, uh, to have the plan. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I think uh, we come to the final uh, session. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Philip, uh, for today sharing. Uh, it's very uh, detailed and information. Uh, we got a lot of useful information and concept about zero trust. Uh, strategy also and uh, implement plan plus a uh, case study. So any final word before we, we end our session, Philip? Yeah, uh, really, really thank you, uh, Bong, for your uh, organizing this session and really, you know, great to you know, have chance to share and, and you know, uh, uh, discuss with the, the cybersecurity uh, community for in Cambodia. And I uh, really appreciate the, your time and, uh, and, and effort today. I know this is a Saturday, <laughs> uh, it's a weekend time. You also need to have uh, a lot of things to do with your family, right? But you spend you know, more than two hours with me. Then I also, I, I try my best, right? To deliver all the things that I know on the knowledge, on the experience that I know to share with you so that it really help you to, you know, uh, fasten your, your zero trust journey. Uh, you don't, you know, uh, spend time, circle around, try to understand, okay, where should I start? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, which, which way that I, I, I do you need to, to go back and read a lot of things? But at the end of the day, I, I, all the things I mentioned, I, I, I read already. But uh, in order to, you know, to, to make it happen in a proper way and in, in more useful and efficient way, it will take time, right? Uh, I also have the fail zero project as well, and I learned from that as well. So, so uh, just to, frankly to share with you, so uh, it, it's not easy. It's not easy, right? Especially when when, when Forrester they don't really provide you a, a, a certain you know outcome, right? They just give a very generic level, right? So that that's that how, but it's it's a pros and con. It's give you the freedom. It give you the freedom to do that your way, right? But in, in the other hand, it really gives you the challenge right? that you don't, when you do it your way, you don't know whether, whether it's really mapped back to the ZTX or not, whether uh, well, which, uh, which maturity level our organization is, is now, right? So yeah. uh, that, that's one. Uh, I, 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 learned, I learned about that a lot, right? And also get the feedback from the, the uh, lot of organization. So I try to make it more practical and also... Uh, uh, Forrester also come out with a practical guide, but to me, that also quite very generic as well, <laughs> right? I read all of them, then I already uh, you have a quick recap for you, right? So you can take that uh, as a reference from the Forrester, right? But you can also take reference from my practical approach as well, which is uh, I already done uh, with the organization across Southeast Asia for their track uh, project in real world as well, right? And uh, okay. of course, 
I I also I also will do you know the the tune in for that as well. And if I have any feedback, uh, any update, I also update to you and also the uh the cybersecurity community of Cambodia, right? And yes, uh, yeah. the final word. Uh, thank you very much for for having me uh today. Actually, I also have some appendix here for you as well. Uh, some of the sample, uh, you know, uh, zero cavity across the copula of ZTX, you can take into account and take into reference as well, right? So uh, after, after, after this session, I will uh, send a PDF copy of this slide uh, to you, Frederick. So you uh, feel free to distribute to the people who attended uh, this session, or even you can distribute to the uh, Telegram group, right? That, that also, I'm also a member of the Telegram group. Uh, yeah. Well, okay. Right? I wish I, I, I to do up, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I cannot read it uh, in in uh, in your local language, but uh, I know wow, this is very strong and very aggressive uh, community. I wish uh, I can do the same for Vietnam and other countries as well. But I uh, really appreciate, really kudos to you and also the the cybersecurity uh, community in in Cambodia, right? So together we will uh, go stronger, right? For for not only for Cambodia. Yeah, Philip, you yeah. gone. We we lost you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah sorry, I'm back. Yeah, okay. So yeah, uh, yeah thank you very much, but uh, please stay safe, right? Yeah, yeah, and uh, thank you very much, Philip, for taking your time with us. Actually, and this is the first time that Philip uh, with us in Cyber Yours Cambodia, but it is not mean the last. So we will invite him again in the near future to talk about the others area of his expertise. So he have a lot of experiences. Uh, both in Vietnam and around the region. So uh, he is uh, uh, a good result for us. We need to take advantage of his <laughs> knowledge, actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my pleasure, my pleasure. Of course, of course. Yeah. Okay, thank you everyone for taking your time. And also, I will the job. So, okay, thank you, Philip. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you much. So, so you have a recording uh, session, right? For yes, session? I will send yeah. you. Yeah, so you can can share this recording session with uh, Isaac Cambodia uh, Telegram. Yeah, of course, of course, I will post and, and share to everyone. Yeah, yeah. So you can say that because that's something that I'm, I uh, is not mentioned in the slide. So yes, yes, yes. yes. For recording. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Again, thank you very much. Okay. Everybody. Uh, and everybody, yeah. uh, please stay safe. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay. Have a nice weekend. Bye. Bye. Everyone.